Around here, we like to keep things simple and honest. Sure do. That's why at Progressive, we show you rates from other companies, even if they're lower than ours, so you can choose what's best for your family. Comparing rates used to be a hard day's work, but not with AutoQuote Explorer. You need me to help again? No. So join us and taste why Progressive is the name people trust. Sorry, are we talking about apples now or insurance? <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny? Time national champions and the number four team in the country, Florida State, taking on Southern Miss. There's Chief Osceola, the Spear Plant, and welcome inside Doe Campbell Stadium alongside Orlando Franklin. I'm George Sedano. Marilyn Payne will join us in just a second. Orlando, Florida State is number four. They just beat LSU. They got a matchup tonight against Southern Miss. What do you make of the matchup? Well, tonight's all about Florida State correcting their mistakes from last week, right? Offensively, you got to get the run game going early and often and no drops out of these explosive wide receiver room. Defensively, it's about the miscommunication and the missed tackles. They would lo are looking to clean that up today and show the world that they last week wasn't a fluke. Southern Miss, what do you make of their chances tonight? Well, it's about developing, right? Taking the next level. I think that when you look at Southern Miss, they are going to probably win the Sun Belt. For them, I think this will be a great test for that young football team and just to see how they match up against a talented FSU team. And there's head coach Mike Norvell. Coach Norvell. 57 and 32 overall, 19 and 16 in his fourth season at Florida State. Big win against LSU. And then Coach Hall on the other side for Southern Miss. Southern Miss has won the toss. They have deferred to the second half, and Florida State will receive. Look for Southern Miss to come out and try to compete immediately, but try to take it to Florida State with their front seven to match up to match the physicality that this football team is going to put out. Andrew Stein kicks it off, and Winston Wright Jr. brings it back to the 25-yard line, and that's where Florida State will begin their drive. Jordan Travis, Heisman hopeful, you think, this year? Absolutely, and I think that when you talk to this coaching staff, they talk about that this offense is Jordan Travis's offense, that they would not be able to run a lot of things that they run on a week-to-week -week basis that they did not have Jordan Travis. And we saw last week he, him operated at a, 100%. A monster game for him last week at Florida State, as you saw there. Southern Miss coming up with a win against Alcorn State. Travis in the gun to begin this one at his own 25 yard line. Travis rolling to his right finds a man incomplete though couldn't hold on Jaheim Bell dropped that one right off the top you see coach Norville with all the different levels on this offense but you also see Jaheim Bell with a drop. It'll be second and ten coming up for Mike Norvell's squad. Jaheim Bell, two touchdowns last week, the South Carolina transfer. He is a guy that you don't even know how to cover this guy. Do they treat him like a tight end? Do they treat him like a wide receiver? I'm sure FSU is excited to see what Southern Miss is going to do today. He's a football player, plays tight end, running back, receiver. Maybe you'll see him at other positions too. Travis under center, Coleman in motion. Play action for Travis. Sets up the screen to Benson. Benson. Finding room and barrels through tacklers as he gets near midfield. A 20-yard gain for Benson. Dylan Lawrence with the tackle for Southern Miss. You could see this then get ready to set up a screen to get Big Roderick out there and also Darius Washington out there blocking on the perimeter with this experienced offensive line. First down there at the 49-yard line for Travis. Travis hands it off to Benson up the middle. Benson gets stopped after a short gain, a gain of about three. You see FSU right away trying to get that run game going and also trying to show a little bit of tempo getting up to the line of scrimmage. Short gain there. Travis in the gun on second and seven. Again to Benson. Struggled getting the snap but was able to haul it in and corral it in. Now a two-yard gain on the left side tackle there made by Jalil Clemens. Trey Benson has been explosive but also showed you his, with his low center of, center of gravity that he can move piles 
And Jordan, and Jordan Travis doing a great job reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. Third and three. Travis with the keeper. Goes up the middle. Gets to the 40. Should have a first down. Yes, he does. Picks up four. And they move the chains. Florida State and company in business. Jordan Travis is one of these guys that he is dangerous when he moves, Orlando. Yeah, quick, easy read. Get up field as soon as possible. Get what you could get and convert on third downs right there. Lawrence Toa Feely now in the backfield with Travis. Travis looking to throw. Goes down the field. He's got a man. It's Coleman. Coleman hauls it in. No, incomplete. Could not haul it in. Michael Carraway Jr. in coverage for Southern Miss. Carraway Jr. matches up about the best on the Southern Miss defense as possible. Right here, you know, Keon Coleman wants that one back. It hit him right in the hands, but he wasn't able to secure it all the way through the ground. Keon Coleman, a great connection last week at LSU. Three touchdowns, a hat trick for him in his first game as a Seminole, the Michigan State transfer, and did it against his old state's squad. He's a Louisiana kid. Second and ten here. Toafili in the pistol formation. Travis is with Toafili behind him. Play action. Travis over the middle. Guns it and he's got a man. It's spanned for a first down. A big gain near the 15-yard line. A 23-yard pitch and catch for Travis to span. Deuce Span understands that the DBs are playing way off. And Jordan Travis is just going to put it right there in the catch radius of Span because of how far off the DBs are playing right now. Quick tempo here for Florida State. It's Toafili on the left side for a two-yard gain. Span, an Illinois transfer. Saw him a little bit last week as well. Yeah, you see this wide receiver room, and it's, it is impressive. Every single one of these guys are big, tall, and strong, and they could go up and get the ball, but also beat you with speed. Travis looking to the sideline for instruction. The pistol formation didn't see a lot of this, I don't think, last week against LSU. Movement there, that's an easy call. Southern Miss with the infraction. Number 36, Bradarius Lewis, it looks like. That's going to be a key for Southern Miss moving forward. Can't have penalties. Five yard penalty. It's still second down. Actually, it'll be on D'Amico Rowland. Now it's second and three after the infraction. Yeah, right there, right near the ball, looking at it. You just got to watch it. You cannot afford to have pre-snap penalties against a team that's as explosive as FSU is. You can't have the mental mistakes of your Southern Miss. I'm with you on that. This team, this Florida State team, is as good as a team as they've had here in a decade. Two tight ends in there for Florida State. They got Morlock and Jaheim Bell. Travis with time, plenty of time, over the middle. It is caught! For a touchdown, Darion Williamson. And the Knolls are on the board first. Just a great job by Jordan Travis, understanding that he's in man-to-man -man coverage. He's able to buy time and let J Darion Williamson run a perfect route to create separation and get an easy score right there. Jordan Travis, you and I talked about this with the coaching staff this week. He is like the CEO of this team. He's got complete command, and you see that there with just plenty of time, knowing what buttons to push at every single moment of the game. Yeah, he's like a computer, George. He understands exactly the situation, where to go with the football, what coverage the defense is playing before they even come out and play it. He just has a great thumb on everything that he's doing offensively for Coach Norville and his offensive coaching staff. Eight plays, 76 yards for the touchdown to Darion Williamson. Three minutes and 26 seconds off the clock for the Seminoles. And they may be the best team in the country, Orlando. I truly believe that. And I believe that because of Jordan Travis being their quarterback. Right there on the touchdown to Williamson, he's looking left the whole entire time. But he has such a great feel for what Southern Miss is playing defensively that he knows that that backside safety is not going to have an opportunity to come and make a play on the ball. Travis had five touchdowns total last week, four in the air, one on the ground. Now six total for the season after that touchdown to Williamson. 
Yeah. Look for Southern Mississippi to try to get this thing going moving forward, right? You got to come out. You got to try to stretch this team horizontally because Florida State, they got a lot of speed on this defense. So look for them to try to get to the perimeter or get some quick wide receiver screens going as early as possible in this game to keep that defense honest. Fitzgerald with the kick. And it will go over the head of Antavius Willis. They call him Rambo. Yeah, that's a nice nickname, right? <laughs> that means he goes right in. First blood, apparently. <laughs> you got to love this squad that Coach Hall has put together. You know, this is the first time that this team has had the depth that they do have moving forward. Billy Wiles, the quarterback, the transfer from Clemson, was a walk-on at Clemson and then earned a scholarship, transferred now to Southern Miss. Coach Hall recruited him when he was the OC at Tulane. His wife knows Billy's mom, who was a member of the U.S. Women's National Team. Athleticism runs in the family there. Yeah, soccer star, Billy Wiles' mom. And we're seeing a lot of movement already. Gore splitting out wide on the left side. They'll begin their drive at the 25-yard line. Wiles, with time, throws it. One hops it to Jacarius Kasten. Incomplete second down coming up. Yeah, it looks like Ty Mims just flat out falls right there. He's not able to get his foot in. Um, Wiles tries to hit him. Look for them to try to come back to that later on the drive because it was right there. Second down to 10 coming up. Gore in the backfield now to the left of Billy Wiles. Florida State showing blitz, and now we've got whistles. Delay of game on Southern Miss. They're going the wrong direction here now. Yeah, you got to be able to hold your water. Can't have those pre-snap penalties. We've already seen one on defense with a neutral zone infraction, and now we see a false start with one of the big boys up front on the offensive line. And the crowd's getting into it. You hear the chant now. Something you're very familiar with, Orlando, playing against some point. Mims in motion. Wiles, play action. Got time. Goes down the field. He's got a man and overshoots his target, Ty Mims. Incomplete third and long coming up. Right there, Wiles just lets it go a little bit too far. But if you're Coach Hall and this offensive staff, you got to feel pretty good about your offensive line holding up and giving Wiles the time he needs to push the ball down the field. But he threw into double coverage there. Greedy Vance right there with Mims. That's probably not what you want if you're Coach Hall. No, absolutely not, right? I mean, with how athletic this team is, with all the takeaways that they're able to create. But the thing is, you know that you, are, you have that moving forward if you want it to be able to push it down the field. Third and 15. Wiles in trouble. He's trying to escape. Gets to the sideline, launches it over the middle of the field. Incomplete, nobody home. And it's a three and out for Southern Miss. They'll be forced to punt. Patrick Payton gets a great get off on that one and, and he's able to get in the backfield just right away. You look at the front four for this Florida State team and they are unbelievable. You see the twist stunt while it's flushed out the pocket. If you're FSU, you got to think great things are going to happen when you are able to get them off schedule. Bryce Lofton to punt it. He is standing at his own five yard line. Keon Coleman to receive. He is waiting at the 43. Lofton, a high spiraling punt. Coleman, fair catches it. And Florida State will begin their second drive at their own 43-yard line. A 37-yard punt. Mr. Reliable, Keon Coleman, back there catching punts. He is a weapon back there. There is no question. He's got great synergy already with his quarterback, as we alluded to. And Johnny Wilson and him have already shown that they can play off each other very well. Yeah, looking at this FSU team and just Coach Norville, you got to be excited about this offense this year and all the weapons and how you could spread the football around. Rodney Hill in the backfield. Now alongside C.J. Campbell. So two backs in the backfield worked very well last week against LSU. 
And they hand it off to Hill on the right side, making a man miss. And he gets taken down near the 50 yard line, a six yard gain. Nice stiff arm there by Hill. Jay Stanley, who had a big game against Alcorn State, a couple of picks with the tackle. Rodney Hill showing you that, hey, I could get this done too, coach. Last week in the LSU game, he got some of the garbage time at the end of the game, but this coaching staff is letting him play a little bit earlier. Second and four, C.J. Campbell now in the backfield. Campbell, redshirt sophomore. Travis taking his time. Takes the snap. Plenty of time. Now comes a delayed blitz. Travis rolls out of it. He's on the move. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to get taken down behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two on the play. Kristen Booth took him down. Kristen Booth with his relentless rush right here. At first, he's at Jordan Travis gets flushed, but Kristen Booth just keeps on be in a, being in attack mode and is finally able to get Jordan Travis down. Third and six from the 47-yard line. Florida State did not allow a sack last week. Technically, that one I don't believe is a sack, though, because he was on the run. So still has, haven't allowed a sack. If he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage, it's a sack, George. Okay, all right. I mean, he was a runner. I don't know how that works. It depends <laughs> on the scorekeeper here at home. Travis, third and six, takes the snap. Pressure coming. He lofts one up for Wilson. Too high. Sails it past him. And it'll be fourth down, and Southern Miss holds on defense. I know that, you know, Johnny Wilson, 6 7. But if you Jordan Travis you got to be able to get that ball just down <laughs> just a little bit right there. Yeah. But a heck of a job to the Golden Eagles and on defense getting off the field right there. So he's six seven. How tall are you again Orlando six six and a half. OK so he's he's a little taller than you. Yeah that was outside of my range too. <laughs> the California kid laid back Johnny Wilson. Coaches love him though. He's such a humble teammate they say time Mims to receive. The pun here by Mastromano. Mims lets it sail over his head into the end zone. And we will take a break here. Florida State with a quick lead, 7 0. Can Southern Miss answer? Florida State struck early. Southern miss their second drive here. Billy Wiles, their quarterback, finds Jacarius Kasten for a nice pickup there. Going down the sidelines, picks up the first down and out of bounds after a 10 yard gain there. If you're Billy Wiles, you know that Florida State is going to play some kind of man to man. I love how he was able to throw into the blitz right there and get Kasten out there to go those yards after the catch. We welcome you to ACC Network primetime football. Those of you watching UNC win in double overtime against App State. We've got Southern Miss here trailing 7 nothing against the home team Florida State. Billy Wiles in trouble throws off his back foot. Dangerous pass incomplete but a flag on the play. Pass intended. For Pittman their tailback Chandler Pittman the pressure there. By Jared Burse. Jared Verse is going to be wrecking havoc all up in the middle of that offensive line all day. Defense number eight, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Renardo Green picks up the infraction there for Florida State. A little too physical on the on the exterior right there, just trying to get up in in the grill of the wide receiver right there and get a little too handsy. And you see, Verse just beats the tackle. Frank Gore Jr. off the off the get go and is able to get that pressure. First and ten here. Mims in motion for Southern Miss. Wiles, the Clemson transfer in trouble. Gets hit as he throws. It's up in the air, incomplete. Kalen Deloach, like a heat-seeking missile, hit Billy Wiles on that one. Just downhill as fast as possible. Kalen Deloach does a great job of understanding that I got to go right now. 
and he doesn't hesitate. That's the thing about this Florida State defense. The communication is there. Each and every linebacker knows when it's their time to blitz, and they know that they're going to get multiple opportunities in the course of a game to get tackles on the quarterback. We got a flag on the play. The penalty is off the down at the spot of the foul. Second down. Intentional grounding on that play. That is a huge penalty. Yeah, you continue to see Southern Miss just shoot theirself, install their own drives. Pre-snap penalties, penalties that you can stay away from, you have to be able to do that if you're going to have any opportunity. A loss of 10 on that one. Yeah, nobody home. And way over the receiver. Second and 21 now for Billy Wiles and company. Wiles checking with the sideline and Coach Hall. Pittman out wide. Wiles with time. Dumps it off. Incomplete. Florida State. Excellent coverage there by Tatum Bethune. I like the thought process of Southern Miss and Coach Will Hall with this offense trying to stretch it horizontally and, and trying to create mismatches by running across the field. But Florida State's defense just shows you that they are way too fast. But look for them to come back to that later on in the game, George. Third and 20 now. This is exactly what Southern Miss wanted to avoid. These third and long situations, Florida State creeping up to the line of scrimmage. Now Bethune dropping back a little bit. Frank Gore Jr in the backfield for Southern Miss. Wiles under pressure throws over the middle. It is caught and complete there. Tyquan Henderson with an 18 yard gain. A unbelievable job by Billy Wiles right there. Just watching the defense in one of the rare occasions where Florida State plays cover two and he's able to get it right over the linebackers to head to Henderson and get a huge completion. Big play here, fourth and three, and Southern Miss is going. The crowd is getting revved up here in Tallahassee. I imagine they're trying to capture the momentum right here if you're Southern Miss. Wiles hands it off, shovel pass to Mims. Can he turn the corner? He cannot. A flag, though, on the play. Yeah, I think right here, I think they might get Avery White illegal crack back on, on the exterior right there he went low and he went backwards towards the line of scrimmage so unfortunately I think it's probably going to be on Southern Miss right here Jari and Jones pushed him out of bounds personal foul illegal block below the waist offense number 42 the penalty is declined the play results in a first down Florida State turnover on downs a five play drive of 33 yards, but Florida State will take over at midfield, leading 7-0 here at Dope Campbell Stadium. To Dope Campbell Stadium, George Adon, Orlando, Franklin, Maryland, Payne with you. Let's take a look at our New York Life Drive recap. Florida State came out swinging early, Orlando. Yeah, Trey Benson gets a screen, is able to get into open field and get an explosive going. And then it's right to do span over the middle where Jordan Travis does a heck of a job reading the defense. And then to cap it off, it's a touchdown to Darian Williamson where Jordan Travis is able to dissect that Eagle defense. Florida State's next drive here will begin on their own 47-yard line. Jordan Travis, the Heisman hopeful. He is the CEO of this roster. There is no doubt about that. What an incredible young man. What an incredible story. His sixth year in college football. Travis on the RPO. Throws off his back foot down the field. Got a man. It's Wilson. And he does not haul it in. Had it in his bread basket, but could not control it through the fall. Brendan Tolls in coverage for Southern Miss. Jordan Travis gets exactly what he wants right here. One on one coverage on the outside with the goal route to Johnny Wilson. Johnny just not able to hold on to that ball through the fall on the, on the ground. Put it right on the money. There is no doubt. Can't throw a better ball than that right there, George. Jordan Travis is one of the best players in college football. To think when Mike Norvell came here, he had struggled so much. He 
told him he wanted to be a wide receiver and Novell said no way and that boosted his confidence and you've seen the growth year after year since then. Travis to Benson on the right side sneaks past midfield a short game there of about three. All of Florida State's run so far in this game has been all the zone read options right where we've seen it him hand off the ball to Benson but we've also seen Jordan Travis pull it. I think something big FSU's offensive coaching staff might have something big planned off of that that we might see later on in the game. Lawrence Toa Feely is in the game now but an empty backfield for Travis and company on third and seven from midfield. Southern Miss crowding the line of scrimmage. Travis setting up the screen to Toa Feely makes a man miss sports past midfield but shy of the first down marker after a two yard gain. That's one of the rare times that I was actually surprised that Jordan Travis didn't check out the play. Pre snap you saw all the Southern Miss guys they had about eight guys in the box. You knew that they were coming because you were in a five widespread set. And Florida State's going to go here on fourth and five as the offense stays on the field. They struggled last year on fourth down conversions but man did they look great in every capacity last week at LSU or against LSU at Camping World Stadium in Orlando Travis low snap got plenty of time he's dancing in the backfield now he's flushed out going backwards finds a man it's to a feeling to a feeling that has plenty of room to run and he picks up the first down as he crosses the 40 yard line a nine yard gain Dylan Lawrence takes him down and the whole crowd is happy about that one. Jordan Travis does an amazing job right here buying time. Got to also shout out the offensive line for not going downfield. Specifically Demetri Emanuel when Jordan Travis does let it rip to Toa Feely to pick up that last block and get that explosive play down the field. Travis a quick toss to the boundary to Johnny Wilson Jr. is incomplete. Second down coming up. If you're Florida State you got to feel pretty good you want to clean up the drops though that's something that they've been working on and harping on from last week playing LSU offensively but they have definitely got the running game going and found a way to incorporate it early in this game. Second down and 10 from the 39 yard line of Southern Miss Florida State two tight ends back there now. Toa Feely in the backfield in a pistol formation. Travis keeps it throws it over the middle sails it over his intended target to span two receivers though in the area there. Yeah that one looked a little bit congested. I'm wondering if one of the receivers either do span or, or the other guy just ran the wrong route right there because you typically don't see Florida State's offense and their wide receiver options get all congested like that in the middle of the field. Florida State third and ten. One for three on third downs in this one thus far. Benson in the backfield with Travis. Southern Miss showing blitz. Here they come. Good pickup. Travis going down the field. He's got a man. It's too spin, and he cannot hold on. Good coverage there by Markel McLaurin for Southern Miss. Jordan Travis does a great job of holding the snap count, understanding that it's man to man coverage, and now taking a shot to his wide receiver. You want to lead him out there a little bit. It's almost like Jordan Span or Deuce Span had a little bit too much speed for that, where he had to come back and slow down to try to make a play on the football. And Florida State is going here. They are on the field on fourth and ten and I don't blame them you're in kind of no man's land you can't punt it from here yeah and you'll know before you snap the ball if Southern Miss is in zone or man coverage it's clock, most likely man right now clock running out they get it off in time Travis flushed out of the pocket he's so dangerous when he runs and you see why here Travis is going to keep it and slides after he picks up the first down. A 12-yard gain for Jordan Travis, and you see right there, 
why he's one of the best players in the country. A 12 yard gain, but about 70 yards being ran on this play. Jordan Travis does a great job of keeping his eyes down the field the whole entire time, but the offensive line does a great, even better job of staying alive to pick up some great blocks. Ball on the 28 yard line after the first down. Man, Travis is electric. Yeah, I, every single time he gets the ball in his hands, I'm wondering what he's going to do next. And we got a timeout here for Southern Miss. They need to talk things over. We'll step aside here as Will Hall and company are trying to figure some things out on defense. Florida State up 7 0. Okay, again, this is a status bar, this is a search bar. Let's know the difference, okay? Social okay. media. It can be overwhelming for a young homeowner turning into their parents. Now, what does it mean to slide into someone's DMs? Mm. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, we're not ready for that. As a team, we'll get there. It might be a fruit emoji, but that doesn't mean they're talking about fruit. Oh. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto with us. Okay, do you really think we need 47 photos of fun dinner at Pam's? Yes. Yeah. No. 180! 180! Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Who do you even play for? T-Mobile. T-Mobile has plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade money every year. That's good play, Colin. Cheers. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. ACC Network College Football is brought to you by the Honey Baked Ham Company. Game day is a honey baked day. Florida State with a 7-0 lead. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin. As they take on Southern Miss, let's welcome in the third member of our team, Marilyn Payne. George, Mike Norvell says this fourth-ranked FSU team is not a we've arrived type of team. He says we can't be. We have to maintain our same work ethic and focus that has allowed us to beat LSU the way we did Sunday. The focus for him is a cleaner, crisper offensive start. Thank you, Marilyn. Quick toss to the boundary there to Winston Wright. Picks up about five on that one. And Jaleel Clements does a heck of a job of getting downhill right now and sorting through the traffic to be able to make that tackle. Four-yard gain. Mike Norvell was very quick to tell us that to Maryland's point in those meetings. He was like, listen, we are not a made team. We want to play with a chip on our shoulder, and I get it. Well, you look back at last week, and there was a lot to correct on the film offensively and defensively when you look at the offense you know they just try to get the screen game going but the run game was something that wasn't a factor for a long period of time in the first half against LSU last week and defensively you want to clean up the missed tackles and the miscommunication if you are coach Norvell and his defensive staff three yard gain third and three we'll call it a long two Travis at the 20 yard line. Keeps it. Pushes forward. Does he have enough? It looks like he may be shy of the first down, but the way Florida State is going for it on fourth down, it's not going to matter. They're clearly going to go for it here, I would presume. Yeah, that would be the expectation. They went for it here on fourth down and it looked like a longer two yards. Right now, fourth and under two. I would expect them to go for it right now as well. Two for two on fourth downs today, Florida State trying to make it three for three. Benson in the backfield with Travis. Southern Miss showing blitz. They hand it off up the middle, right up the gut. Benson into the end zone for the touchdown. A 19-yard scamper for Trey Benson. And the Knowles are cooking. Right there, you see the experience of this offensive line. Trey Benson is able to stagger down the field for 19 yards, but it's about the big boys up front identifying the defense and what Southern Miss is trying to do and being able to bring the physicality to that front seven to keep their running back clean for a nice score. 12 plays, 53-yard drive, capped off by that 19-yard run by Benson. Five minutes and 23 seconds off the clock. The extra point by Fitzgerald is up and good. And Florida State up 14-0 here in the first. There have been so many great things that you have seen on that drive. 
But the touchdown run, you see that offensive line part the season. I'm telling you, George, me and you could have got through that hole right there. <laughs> I don't know about me. You it, maybe. You it, slimmed down as an offensive lineman. You're down like 100 pounds almost. I'm a 46-year-old dude who was a weekend warrior. But the hole was big enough for the both of us. <laughs> we could have went through it side by side. Maybe I could have gone on your back <laughs> and you could have dragged me there like a, like a child. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I could have ran through that. But I appreciate the thought and the it, sentiment. If you're Coach Norvell and, and Coach Atkins, you got to feel really good about where you're at running the football right now because last week that was a, a point of emphasis in the second half when you got the run game going it made things a lot easier for Jordan Travis and the skill positions on the perimeter. Fitzgerald to kick here and Tavius Willis waiting at his goal line for Southern Miss. Rodri Clark back there as well. Oh and we have an onside kick. Can Florida State recover? They're going to check looks, here. Looks like it's crowded. No, they'll say Southern so. Miss was able to get it. A good gamble there because they've got the momentum and they're clearly the better team. Yeah, but that I'm one didn't work out. Shaheen Brown made the tackle there. I like Florida State's thought process right there. You know, just with the surprise onside kick. Wait, it looks like Shaheen Brown recovered the ball, although the referee pointed the other direction. He pointed Southern Miss. So what are they doing here? Lots of lots of miscommunications right now. The official absolutely pointed towards Southern Miss, but FSU is going to have the ball. There you have it. Yeah. So a great gamble by Mike Norvell. Is able to steal a possession right there for his offense. It, it's only week two for the officials, too. So there's that. Getting in a rhythm. Lawrence Toafili in the backfield with Travis. So Florida State looking to tack on some more. Travis with time. Launches one down the sideline for Wilson. He comes up with the grab and a flag on the play. Down near the 25 yard line for Wilson. Quez McNeil in coverage, and you see that connection that Wilson and Travis have. Yeah, you see that these guys have worked together for a long period of time, but I think that this might be coming back, George, because I thought that Wilson had stepped out of bounds right there, but no, it looks like they're calling passing interference. The ref threw his hat off, which acknowledges that he had stepped out of bounds, but... I guess they're picking that one up. Oh, he yeah. did step out. Yeah. But right there, if you're if you're Jordan Travis and and they're going to review that one. If you're Jordan Travis and Johnny Wilson, you're feeling pretty good about that connection, though, because you've tried to get that going earlier in the game, and it's unfortunately you haven't been able to complete it. Right there, although I think it's going to come back. You've got to be building the confidence in Johnny Wilson, the fact that he was able to go to the ground and complete that catch, though. A 26-yard gain if it stands. But I'm guessing this one isn't going to stand after the review. Yeah, you get to slow that thing down for the referees now and, and really see exactly where Johnny Wilson was running, but also see if he was in bounds the whole entire time on that route. Wilson... They rave about him, obviously. Monster game in the Cheez-It Bowl last season. Of course, a big game against LSU last week. They talk about how humble he is. And really him and Keon Coleman, how neither guy is a me guy and how they fit seamlessly. Norvell told the story to us, Coach Norvell, about how when they were recruiting Keon Coleman, that some of the other coaches that were trying to recruit him out of the portal out of Michigan State were negative recruiting, saying, you don't want to go play with Johnny Wilson. He's the guy there. Why do you want to play with that? And Mike Norvell, who had recruited him at a high school, told him, listen, this is actually going to be perfect for you. You guys are both going to be able to eat out there. Yeah, it shows you just the confidence of Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson, both of these guys saying, hey, you know what? Let's both get together. Let's push each, push each other on a day-to-day -day basis, and let's see what can happen in the course of a season of playing all these games together. And as I, my forecast is, 
George did, it's going to be exciting week in, week out. Let's take a look at that play one more time as the officials are looking at it. We saw earlier. Wilson had stepped out of bounds right there at the 30 yard line. Yeah, you want to come back to that, though, if you're Coach Norville, though, and Coach Atkins, because you know that you could have that one on one matchup and it's going to be there all day. You just got to tell Johnny, maybe you're going to shorten your split and stay away from that sidelines a little bit more to make a great adjustment on the football instead of st stepping out of bounds. Head official Tim Hedgepeth having a conversation there. This shouldn't take that long, I don't think. Like, this should be like, hey, let's keep it moving and let's go. Yeah, it looks clear as day. It's something that you, you, you should have been able to get a, a great call or a great grasp of the situation. And if you're Southern Miss, this is actually good for them because they get a break on defense. They've been gassed as Florida State has been able to move the ball. That humidity down here is unbelievable. I've played here in this stadium, in this environment, in this atmosphere. And if you're not used to it. After further review, the receiver did not reestablish inbounds. Therefore, the pass was incomplete. The 15-yard penalty for defensive pass interference is enforced. Automatic first down. So that still worked out for Florida State in regards to getting the first down, but the big chunk play is taken back. Yeah, so I imagine this referee crew took a little bit longer on the call because of the defensive pass and interference. But yes, a fresh set of downs for Coach Norvell in this offense. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 36 yard line. To Ophelia in the backfield. And he's in a wildcat formation as Travis splits out wide. To Ophelia. Off right tackle. A nice gain there. About three yards. It'll be second and seven coming up. Under two and a half to go here. To Ophelia, the St. Petersburg native. That was just a counter OT pulling Les Harris and Casey Roderick to the right side. And Toa Feely just getting the ball with a full head of steam and going forward. A nice little wrinkle to this offense. Keziah Holmes now in the backfield in the pistol formation. Second and seven from the 34. Florida State using all the running backs right now. Travis changing the play. Hands off. And picks up another chunk of change there, a four yard gain by Holmes. I love the play call because all you did was flip the play and just run it now from Travis, from Travis at the quarterback position, but you just run the counter OT to the opposite direction and you're able to get an efficient run right there to bring up third and four. Holmes, a Penn State transfer. Lawrence Toafili now in the backfield. On third and four. Ball on the 30 yard line. Florida State also has some changes along the offensive line. As we mentioned before we jumped on ACC Network. Robert Scott Jr. and Maurice Smith are out. Darius Washington and Bless Harris are in. Travis over the middle. He's got it. No, Wilson drops it. That's another drop for Johnny Wilson. If you are Jordan Travis, you've got to be getting frustrated because pre-snap, you know that you're going to him right now. That DB's playing off coverage, but Johnny Wilson unable to complete that catch by, with going to the ground right there. Normally sure-handed Wilson. An incompletion there. Wilson from Pacoima, California. He's had three drops last week and three drops tonight. And it's only we're only in the first quarter. Fourth down and four. Florida State three for three on fourth downs already. Travis, low snap, picks it up off the ground. Got time. Throws it into the end zone. Incomplete as Keon Coleman tried to climb the ladder and couldn't haul it in. Jay Stanley in coverage there. Jay Stanley does a heck of a job alongside uh, Sabatin being able to now squeeze Keon Coleman and deflect that ball and not allow the big time playmaker to come down with that football. Sabatini also there in coverage. And those two Coleman and Travis had the big connection last week. 
three separate times. Got the hat trick as far as touchdowns were concerned. You're called tall. You're feeling really good. That was a momentum changer right there. Your defense able to get off the field on fourth down. Billy Wiles and company take the field under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Frank Gore Jr. has not had a rush attempt here. And another flag, a false start for Southern Miss. False start. Offense number 38. Five yard penalty. It's still first down. And they continue to go the wrong direction. Are you surprised that no rushes for Frank Gore Jr.? Yeah, it's been really surprising seeing that. I think the referees got it wrong. I think that was Gare Khan squat, Scott, the left guard that moved a little bit early. But yeah, Frank Gore Jr., you got to get him going. Got to get him as many touches as possible, especially because he's a field running back. He, he likes to feel the course of the game, and he gets stronger as the game goes on. Six penalties for 35 yards for Southern Miss. Play action. Wiles. Throws a wild pass out of bounds. Jacarius cast in the intended target, and they are not on the same page right now. Florida State plays man to man, and they are fast showing defense. Right there, a lot of miscommunication on the perimeter with this wide receiver group as far as who has who, which messes up the timing. And Billy Wiles just has to throw it away right there. Second and 15. From the 25, Wiles, the Clemson transfer, was a walk on there, then got a scholarship, transferred here to Southern Miss. Takes the snap, hands it off to Gore, his first run, and Gore wrapped up after a short gain of about one. Tackle there made by Akeem Dent. That's where you're not going to have success against this defense. They're too much fast flowing. You can't try to get to the sidelines. I was shocked that I didn't see Frank Gore Jr. put his foot in the ground and try to get north and south on that last one. Third and 14 as the clock is winding down here for the first quarter. Piling up the pressure. Let's see what Coach Adam Fuller does to BC now. And they're showing blitz. Wiles. On third and 14. And another whistle. As that is the that end is of the, the first end quarter. Of the first quarter. So after one quarter, the Knowles up two touchdowns. Southern Miss trying to keep their drive alive. Around here, we like to keep things simple and honest. Sure do. That's why at Progressive, we show your rates from other companies, even if they're lower than ours, so you can choose what's best for your family. Comparing rates used to be a hard day's work, but not with AutoQuote Explorer. You need help again? No. So join us and taste why Progressive is the name people trust. Sorry, are we talking about apples now or insurance? <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny? 180! 180! Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Who do you even play for? T-Mobile. T-Mobile has plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. That's good play, Colin. Cheers. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. The fourth-ranked Knowles lead at Southern Miss 14-0. With me now, head coach Will Hall. What do you need to see from your offense to get in the end zone here? Well, we've gotten behind the chains. You know, we, we've jumped offside. Some of our younger guys in this environment, you know, didn't handle it as well as we would hope. We jumped offside. Right there, they slapped the D-lineman, made a clapping sound, made us jump. Defensively, we played pretty well. They had to convert several fourth downs to get their second touchdown drive. And uh, But we got to settle down offensively and uh, and execute our offense. How do you calm your guys? Back to action. Thank you, Maryland, with Coach Hall. Wiles throws one incomplete. Intended for Jacarius Caston, but a flag on the play. Tight coverage on the outside by Destin Hill right there. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Deepest number 11. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Patrick Payton. The ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year last season with the infraction there. Yeah, look for Peyton to continue. He's a high motor guy, and he's now his body's finally developing out. This guy had a penalty last week, now another penalty this week, but it's one of those aggressive penalties, getting after the quarterback. If you're a coaching staff, you could live with that, but you want him to be able to use better judgment in, in different situations to be able to get Southern Miss off the field rather than let them keep on driving the football. The 15-yard penalty puts them at their own 41. 
First and ten Wildcat here. And a false start as Frank Gore seems frustrated. False start. Offense. Everybody but the snapper. Five yard penalty. First down. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever heard that one before. Everyone but the snapper. You played offensive line have you, in the NFL and in college. So did you ever hear that before? I've heard it once or twice before, George. <laughs> it just means that everybody else was right and the, and the center heard a different snap <laughs> count right there. Seventh penalty for 40 yards for Southern Miss. Only one penalty for 11 yards for Florida State. Going backwards here for Southern Miss. First and 15 for Wiles. Avery White in motion there, tight end. Play action for Wiles. Got time. Goes to the sideline. He's got a man. It's caught there. He hurdles a defender. It's Ty Mims with a big pickup there as he gets into Florida State territory. A 33-yard gain for Southern Miss. Great call by Coach Will Hall. Moving the pocket to the right to capture some of those defenders' eyes. And you're able to see Ty Mims get lost behind the DBs for their explosive play. And it looks like Akeem Dent went down with a hamstring as he immediately grabbed for his leg, his left leg. Let's step aside as the trainers attend to Akeem Dent. Is this your plan to watch the game today? I have to watch my neighbor's NFL Sunday ticket. It's not your best plan. Do you know what it is? My plan from Verizon. Football season is here. Get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on us, a $449 value. Plus, get a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, only on Verizon. Around here, we like to keep things simple and honest. Sure do. That's why at Progressive, we show you rates from other companies, even if they're lower than ours, so you can choose what's best for your family. Comparing rates used to be a hard day's work, but not with AutoQuote Explorer. Need me to help again? No. So join us and taste why Progressive is the name people trust. Sorry, are we talking about apples now or insurance? <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny? Not great news at the moment for Akeem Dent, the senior from Pahokee for Florida State, as he's going into the 10, Orlando. A huge loss for the Sentinels defense if he's not able to get back out there. Has 15 pass breakups, leads the team in that category because he's always around the football. We'll see if Southern Miss can capitalize. They're in Florida State territory here at the 31 yard line, first and 10. Nims in motion. They hand it off to Gore up the middle, and Gore picks up about four yards there. A nice, just full steam of head run by Frank Gore right there. Help build that confidence of this offensive line, just going straight at that front seven for Florida State. So far, they've done a good job of protecting in the passing game, but they have to get the running game going if they're going to be able to get in the end zone. They give him five. Gore is coming into the game was 80 yards away from 3,000 career rushing yards. Wiles takes the snap, hands it off to Gore. Gore gets loose, gets the first down, going down the sideline and knocked out of bounds near the 10 yard line. A 16 yard gain for Gore. Let's go to more on Frank Gore Jr. Frank Gore Jr. said Thursday, I am so excited for this huge opportunity to show people I am who I think I am. In the past, he says he hasn't capitalized like he wants to tonight. First and 10 from the 11. Wiles checking with the sideline. Southern missing the red zone for the first time here tonight. Trailing 14-0. And whistles on the play here, a flag on the play. I think we might get some movement up front again with that offensive line for Southern Miss. Five to the snap, false start. Offense number 65, five yard penalty. It's still first down. That's their eighth penalty in nearly 17 minutes of play in this game. And I get it, Florida State's defensive front is ferocious, but you can't keep doing that. And it's again on Greg Cron Scott. I mean, that might be his third false start, I think, of this game. And he's a guy that this coaching staff was really excited to watch play against this team because he could match the physicality. They told us he was a Sunday type player. He's having trouble tonight. First and 15. They give it to Gore again. 
Gore spins out of the tackle for some positive yardage, a two-yard gain for Gore. Sometimes those big offensive linemen, when they know that they're pulling and it's a power play and I got to get out there and go pull and get a linebacker, sometimes they might rock back or just be a little antsy and not sit in the stands. If I'm Scott, I'm just thinking about that snap count, I'm telling myself the snap count over and over and over again because I can't afford to hurt my team any much more. DJ Lundy in that, on that tackle. Wiles on second and 13, checking with Billy Hall on the sideline. They give it to Gore again, and Gore gets stopped. A two-yard gain for Gore, and Florida State's defense tightening up. Coach Will Hall going to have to draw something up here. DJ Lundy just showing you that, yeah, you might be able to fool me once, but you're not going to be able to fool me twice. So Coach Hall tried to go back to that counterplay, and Lundy was just able to get downhill and get that tackle. Third and 12 from the 13. Rodrigue Clark now in the backfield. The redshirt junior out of Starkville, Mississippi. A lot of natives on this Southern Miss team. If I'm Southern Miss, I'm thinking screen right here. And another whistle. Timeout Florida State this time. As Mike Norvell and company want to talk this thing over, Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator, probably saw something he didn't like. As you watch, as you watch this defense of Florida State, they continue to blitz. So if I'm Coach Hall, I'm thinking about trying to dial up a blitz with Clark in that backfield inst instead of Gore because he's more of the pass down back and the running routes back. So try to take advantage of that aggressive defense of Florida State. And now it's time for Food Lions. Food for thought, Orlando. What is your food for thought tonight in this contest? Well, just looking at Southern Miss this, this game, it's got to be explosive plays downfield. you got to capitalize on that. You also got to figure out a way to use misdirection as an advantage. And offensively, you want to be able to match your physicality up front. Florida State, we know that you have speed, 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 but can you capitalize with the running game, get that run game going early, and also be physical on all three phases when there is tight coverage out there? Third and 12, Southern Miss 0 for 2 on third down in this one thus far. Henderson in motion. Wiles changing the play. Wiles under pressure. He's got a man. No, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Avery White tried to stretch out for it and could not haul it in. Man, if you're Billy Wiles, you want that one back. You were able to catch Florida State in the blitz and had a perfect design play up to, to try to go get and connect with Avery White but it's just a little short right there. But he stood in there to take the hit, but yeah, could not get the ball there. Andrew Stein to kick the field goal. QB pressure there by Dylan Brown Turner for Florida State. A 30 yard attempt for Stein. He had a 52 yarder last week and he kicks it up and good. And Southern Miss gets on the board here for the first time. Southern Miss. A 57 yard drive leads to three points. Florida State up 11. It's within 11 after a 30 yard field goal, but the talk of the town was the connection between Jordan Travis and Keon Coleman, the Michigan State transfer. A hat trick, three touchdowns for Coleman from Travis. Tonight though, no catches for yeah. Keon Coleman. What, what's the difference? Yeah, um, defensive coordinator Dan O'Brien in his first year has done a heck of a job of mixing up the coverages, but always keeping two guys around Keon Coleman, not allowing him to get started. So whether that's trap coverage or just a delayed man-to-man -man or some kind of zone with a rover over the top where they're just Travis, Jordan Travis has had to move off of him early in his progression because there's been two guys around him all times. Southern Miss scoring drive, nine plays, 57 yards, 30-yard field goal, four minutes and 26 seconds off the clock. Andrew Stein to kick it off. Winston Wright Jr. and Keziah Holmes set to receive for Florida State. Stein boots it. Florida State will receive. Winston Wright makes a man miss. Another man miss. Stays on his feet. Heading towards the sideline and out of bounds at 
the 31 yard line, a 31 yard return for Wright. Winston Wright does a great job of catching that ball in the end zone, but pressing it, going straight ahead and allowing that, deep, that special teams to collapse and now being able to bounce it outside using his speed and showing that he has explosive playmaker ability with that little shimmy sidestep as well. Little hezzy. Everybody wishes they had that in their in their uh, move <laughs> box, right? <laughs> oh, I don't think there's any question. That's one of those video game moves you see right there. Trey Benson in the backfield with Travis. They begin their drive at their own 31 yard line. Travis rolling to his right. So dangerous on the run. Goes down the field. He's got a man, but Wilson cannot haul it in. Diving for the play. Brendan Tolls in coverage for Southern Miss. Tolls does a great job of just laying into the body of Johnny Wilson and just being close to him but just making sure that he doesn't go too far where the penalty can be called. A little hand fighting there though. Yeah but the referee well, hand fighting's okay as long as you don't grab a guy's hand down. Yep. Lawrence to a feeling now in the backfield. Florida State continues to use all their running backs tonight. Toa Feely flips sides. He'll take the handoff. Slips a tackle and a short gain there. A two yard gain for Toa Feely. If you're Coach Hall, you got to feel very confident as far as how your defense has been playing because they've been doing a great job of reading their keys and following the ball with their eyes and staying in their gaps to make those great plays right there where instead of it being just a two yard game it could have been a five yard game if you don't do that. Big D'Amico Roland 340 pounder brought down to a feely there. Jordan Travis on third and eight six of 15 at the moment for 70 yards and one touchdown does have four rushes for 14 yards as well. Travis takes the snap pressure coming steps up in the pocket throws over the middle and it is caught by Darion Williamson a 12 yard gain there already has a touchdown and another catch to add to his tally. I love coach Atkins call right there because you go five wide the defense has to declare their self. Are you in man or are you in zone and Jordan Travis continues to make the right decision as far as where he goes with the football Florida State now two of seven on third downs Travis on first down. The RPO gives it to Benson, no, to Ophelia actually. To Ophelia makes a man miss, heading down the sidelines, cuts back inside. It's a foot race, and he's taken down at the 20 yard line. A 44 yard gain for To Ophelia. What a great run there by. The big boys out in front just continue to get it done. To Ophelia makes a heck of a move, but look at big Jeremiah Byers, 63, way down the field to help his teammate out. Fuvi with the tackle there on Toa Fili. First down from the 21 yard line of Southern Miss. The Knolls are in business. They hand off up the middle to Benson. Not much there. Maybe a gain of one, but probably no gain. Southern Miss does a great job of creating penetration right there and you're able to get their linebackers Bozeman and Maples in the backfield to try to collapse that and give Trey Benson nowhere to run with the football. C.J. Campbell now checks in at tailback. From Kaplan Louisiana but played high school ball in Florida. Look for Florida State to take advantage of the matchup up there with within Keon Coleman at some point one on one span on the jet sweep. He's got room to run. He's got the first down and he's tackled near the five yard line taken down at the six a 14 yard gain for Deuce Span. A great job on the reverse right here. Deuce Span does a great job taking the hand up but getting upfield as fast as possible using his wide receivers and everybody they're blocking on the perimeter. Quez McNeil with the tackle quick play here to Campbell up the middle but flags are on the play as he's trying to push the pile. Jay Jones pardon me Jay Stanley missed the shoestring tackle as he was diving on that last run. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be Holden on the defense right here. Illegal substitution, defense, more than 11 players on the field. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. That's nine penalties now for Southern Miss. If you're Florida State, you, you want to keep on applying pressure, right? I mean, don't allow Southern Miss to, to substitute. Play at a fast tempo. This is where you practice down here in South Florida with the humidity. You want to tire these guys out as much as possible. First and goal from the three-yard line for Travis and company. Coleman, the lone receiver, out to the left in motion. Hand it off up the middle to Benson for the touchdown. He walks into the end zone. A three yard run. And the Knowles put up another TD. A seven play drive, 64 yards, and a three yard TD by Benson. Trey Benson just running off tackle right here. Full head of steam and trusts his offensive line is going to be able to move the guys that are in front of them and get those guys in the end zone. They, they, they usually say, as for your offensive lineman, George, if you could get your defender in the end zone, good things happen. And good things just happen for Florida State offense because of it. As I mentioned, seven plays, 64 yards. Benson with a three yard score, three minutes and 37 seconds off the clock. Fitzgerald for the extra point is up and good. And the Knowles have regained control of this game. Trey Benson powering his way through, showing off his muscles. Gotta love the. Football's here, you know what that means. More flame grill beef from Burger King. Celebrate with us, cheer on your team. Y'all know this part, come on, let's sing. BK, have it your way. Around here, we like to keep things simple and honest. Sure do. That's why at Progressive, we show you rates from other companies, even if they're lower than ours, so you can choose what's best for your family. Comparing rates used to be a hard day's work, but. Not with AutoQuote Explorer. Need me to help again? No. So join us and taste why Progressive is the name people trust. Sorry, are we talking about apples now or insurance? <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny? Thanks, Kelsey. We got a good one here. Florida State put up another touchdown. Trey Benson capped it off with a three yard score. They kick it off here to Southern Miss. And Antavius Willis with a nice return there out of bounds near the 30 yard line. And pushed out of bounds by Ashlyn Barker. There's coach Alex Atkins, who we met this week. And man, when you're in a room with that guy, I totally get why kids want to play for him. Yeah, the scope of college football is changing. And Coach Atkins gets it. He gets how to motivate these young men to get the absolute best out of them. And the thing that I love that he said about all these guys was getting to know them off the field before coaching them up on the field. So he's doing that and he's getting the best out of each and every individual on this offense. He said that because it allows him to say, hey, look, if I can develop a real relationship with them, then when I got to, you know, potentially cuss them out <laughs> because they make a bad play, they're like, yeah, he's my guy. I get it. And they're on the same page. Yeah, it's the little things, right? When you're a coach and just doing those things right and making a guy feel like he can work for you and do whatever it takes, it, it gives you all the confidence in the world. Interception there by Florida State. Conrad Hussey picks it off. Hussey. And Wiles threw one off his back foot. And not the way Southern Miss drew that up, but Florida State is back in business. Hussey does a great job of keeping his eyes on the quarterback the whole entire time. Wait, they're bringing the defense back on the field. They're going to check to see if he was able to haul it in. Mm, it looks like he goes down and tries to catch it like a bread basket, but ultimately that ball looks like it falls right between the arms and ends up on the floor. I don't know. I got to see another version of that. I thought he was able to corral that. You know what? When you're a defensive guy, you're used to catching the ball with your body, right? As a wide receiver, you're taught to catch the ball with your hands right there. Hussey looks like he goes now and tries to catch it with his body. 
All right, well, they'll give it back to Southern Miss. It'll be an incomplete in the books. Second and ten, Mims in motion. Wiles, low snap, under pressure, and he is wrapped up and sacked for a loss there on the play. Je Dennis Briggs Jr. with the sack there, second sack for Florida State. That defense comes in waves. First, it's Patrick Payton. Then it's Dennis Briggs. Then it's Joshua Farmer. Everybody gets an opportunity to rush the quarterback. It just comes in waves, but credit to the relentlessness of that front four for Florida State. Verse also there, but Briggs first on the scene. Third and 13. Southern Miss has been in third and long a ton here. Your coach Hall, you want to get the ball out of your hands as fast as possible. This is a danger zone here for Southern Miss, and Florida State senses it as they crowd the line of scrimmage. They hand it off on a draw play to Gore. Nothing doing there. A gaggle of defenders take down Frank Gore for Florida State. And now Southern Miss is 0 for 4 on third down in the punt unit coming out. That front. That front four for Florida State just continues to be relentless in their rush and not allowing the big guys for Southern Miss up front to move them. A great job of finding the ball carrier Frank Gore Jr. in that traffic to force the fourth down and get off the field right there. Bryce Lofton fields it at his nine to punt it to Keon Coleman awaiting for it back pedals to the 30 takes it. Makes a man miss, cuts inside and taken down near the 35 yard line. If you're Keon Coleman, you're, you're excited. That was your first punt return of the year right there. Our week three ACC Network fall lineup starts next Thursday night as Bethune Cookman faces Miami at 7.30 Eastern. We'll be there. Then Saturday afternoon, number 21 Duke hosts Northwestern at 3.30 Eastern. And in the nightcap, FAU and 25th ranked Clemson meet in Death Valley at 8 Eastern. All three games right here on ACC Network and on the ESPN app. A 48-yard punt, five-yard return to the 35. And that's where Jordan Travis will take over. As you see, he's trying to tell his guys, let's get into tempo here. He wants to move fast. This is his offense. It's designed for him. Travis with the keeper tries to cut back inside and wisely slides and whoa we got a little extracurricular activity there and you see the flag pop up. Yeah um, if you're Travis if you're Jordan Travis you know you don't want this game to get out of hand but smart move by him right there getting the, to the perimeter and kind of sliding and going down. MJ Daniels getting to talking to after the play on sportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 11, his first of the game. The 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Right. Florida State now moves to the 50. Right there, the young man, MJ Daniels, just a little bit too much. And, you know, it's always the, the person that that's to, reacts that gets in trouble. Right there, you just want to see him move away from Jordan Travis. You've already made the tackle, it's and just move on right there. Not do something to hurt your football team. First down, they'll put it at the 49 yard line of Southern Miss. Travis, flag out there, takes a shot down the field, and it is knocked away. Intended for Destin Hill. Michael Carraway Jr. knocks it away. Let's see about the laundry. Southern Miss continues to play tight coverage. Offside, defense number 11. Five yard penalty. First down. MJ Daniels again. Another infraction. And he's laughing about it, but I'm sure his coaches aren't laughing about it. Yeah, just too aggressive on the outside right there. Trying to be all up in the grill, play press man coverage, you know, trying to get a jam on the wide receiver. But you got to check with the referee and make sure that you're on sides before you can be that physical on the perimeter. That is the 11th penalty for 68 yards for Southern Miss. Yeah, if you're here, Coach Hall, you are not excited about that because you've been hurting yourself. Rodney Hill in the backfield now with Travis. A quick toss to the boundary to Keon Coleman. Another flag on the play. Hurdles a defender. Keon Coleman picks up the first down. But the referees have been on center stage tonight. 37. The penalty is declined. The 
play result in a first down. Southern Miss continues to make mistakes. But it didn't matter as you heard the officials say there that they declined the penalty. Yeah, Keon Coleman though finally getting started getting a nice easy catch being able to show his athletic ability on the perimeter with that hurdle out of bounds as well at the end of the play. C.J. Campbell now in the backfield next to Travis first and ten from the 36 yard line Travis dumps it down to Campbell a flag on the play plenty of room gets tripped up near the 15 yard line a 20 yard gain we'll see what the flags about. C.J. Campbell came open so fast. I bet it's some kind of pick play or on the wide receiver. I bet this one's on Florida State coming back because of how quick he was able to come out the backfield and come open. This game has been herky jerky with all the Pass penalties. Offense number 21, 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. That is on Darion Williamson from Brownsville, Tennessee, who had a touchdown earlier. Yeah, just a little bit over aggressive, right? I mean, I understand that Southern Miss plays man to man coverage, and Darion Williamson just goes in and, and hits the linebacker for uh, TQ Newsom for uh, the, the Golden Eagles. Trey Benson in the backfield now. Florida State back on their own 49 yard. If you're Florida State, you got to love this heavy rotation that you have going on at running back, keeping these guys fresh. Third FSU penalty for 45 yards. They've all been 15 yard penalties. Travis rolling to his right. So dangerous on the run. Slings one incomplete, intended for Coleman. And the fans here, the Boo Birds, are out because they thought he got hit out of bounds. Yeah, Keon Coleman comes on a drag route across the field right there. And Jordan Travis is trying to get it to him, but he's trying to wait as long as possible. And right there, just not able to connect. And they may have something here. The fans may be in the right on this one because he took a hit. He was way out of bounds on that one. Yeah, Dylan Lawrence was late right there. You don't want to see that happen. Hopefully he's able to settle down and play within the lines and within the whistle. Second and 25. Coleman with four targets. One catch today. Travis, quick toss to right. Right. Weaving his way through traffic and down inside the 40 yard line, an 11 yard gain. It'll be third down and long still here. A slight adjustment by this Florida State offense. Last week they were throwing the slip screen to the furthest guy right there. They go in a three by one set, throw it to the middle guy, and the blocking on the perimeter becomes a little bit more easier right there. Travis on third and long, got time, flings one, caught by Coleman, his second catch down the sideline as he avoids a tackle, hurdles a defender, and taken down inside the five. On LSU. Keon Coleman shows you why he is special, but also the fact that he, how reliable he is. Jordan Travis, you throw the ball short of the sticks. Don't worry, I'll break the tackle and I'll go over one of the better players in Stanley for this defense and now get this crowd fired up. Man, he is electric to watch. First and goal for the Knowles. These guys are only going to get better as the season goes along as well. That connection is going to get better and better as the weeks go on. Travis checking in with the sideline. As they're trying to tack on six more here before the half. Travis over the middle. Touchdown. Touchdown Travis to Coleman. His fourth touchdown of the season. A nice inside release by Keon Coleman and just shows his hands late. Travis jo Jordan Travis continues to show his patience and show that this is his offense. He understands exactly the has a great feel for it. He knows when guys are going to come open. He's going to be open at some point. He's going to come up big for me. Six plays 65 yard drive capped off by the Coleman touchdown a six yard strike. Two minutes and 15 seconds off the clock. Fitzgerald for the extra point. The kick is up and right between the pipes. 
Florida State is asserting their dominance in this contest. Keon Coleman with just an athletic ability with this hurdle right here and just gets it done for a big game. Inside release on the touchdown, goes up and gets it. Great field, both feet in bounds. Florida State up 28-3. Coming up on the ACC Network Halftime Report, Kelsey Riggs, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, the Florida State alum, who has to be happy, and Eddie Royal will get you up to date on all of today's college football action in the ACC. Fitzgerald kicks it off here. Tavius Willis, who will field it in his end zone. He'll take it out and taken down. No, he stays on his feet and trying to get to the sideline. Taken down just shy of the 15-yard line, a 14-yard gain. Keon Coleman had his first touchdown catch of the game today, his fourth of the season. For more on Keon, let's go to Maryland. Hurdling a defender on the way to set up that touchdown might take the cake as Keon Coleman's new favorite moment as a knoll. But he said last week his favorite moment was watching the spear plant at midfield. He said, I've been watching YouTube videos all week to become a proper knoll. Not to be overshadowed, he said he loved the opportunity to break the rock, adding the third piece of the rock to the two he already has from summer camp. And most importantly, the sod captain for the LSU win, Keon Coleman said, I wanted to sniff a little bit more, but it was turf and I felt like that might be disrespectful, but it's important for him as a transfer, he said, to really lean in to the FSU traditions here. No doubt he is certainly assimilated man. He is right in the mix here. Gore with a, a run there. No gain on that one. But Keon Coleman has just been a fantastic addition to the squad. Yeah, just great. You know, Coach Norvell and his coaching staff hearing that Keon Coleman had entered the transfer portal. Those guys raced as fast as possible to try to get a hold of this kid because you could tell that he has big playability and you're seeing it in the first two games as a, as a Florida State Seminole. Coach Norvell did tell us as soon as he was in the portal, Wiles under pressure, incomplete, tries to dump it down there to Gore. He told us that when he saw that Keon was in the portal, he's like, we didn't really even need a wide receiver, but we saw him and we needed to go in there. and. It just speaks to how special of a talent Keon Coleman is, right? I mean, even when you're set at the wide receiver position, if you could get a guy that only adds another layer to your offense, you've got to go and get that guy. And I'm happy that, to see that connection with Coach Norville and Keon Coleman. Called him a playmaker, and you see that there for sure. Coach Alex Atkins told us that when he got there, he said he could help Johnny Wilson with his routes. Wiles, incomplete, tries to go to the sideline there. That's great coverage right now by this FSU defense. Azaria in coverage there, Azaria Thomas. Yeah, Azaria Thomas able to, to, you know, have a clean break on the ball. But right now, this defense is playing back, basically back on their heels. They're able to see everything that Billy Wiles is trying to do and react to the football. They haven't been stressed out at all. And a nice three and out right there. To Southern Miss struggling outside of one drive, and they were aided by Florida State penalties. Here's the punt. Coleman to field it at his 47, and he is tripped up at the 44-yard line by Jeremiah Robinson. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live My Student Section of the Year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. The home opener here, Orlando. Yeah, this is a place that is tough to play. And when you just look at it, at nighttime as well, Doak Camel Stadium is rocking, and this crowd is having fun. The fans having fun too. You know that. You know that feeling walking into this building and playing in a game against these guys. So it is a hostile environment. Let's just say that, George. The last punt, 38 yards, loss of five. First and 10 from the 44 yard line. Florida State on their side of the field. Travis in trouble and he throws it away. Pressure there by Southern Miss. Jalil Clements came on the blitz. Clements just right off the ball was able to key into Jordan Travis. 
just go forward, go straight, and beats the right tackle Byers and is able to get a hit on Jordan Travis right there and force him now to get the ball out of his hands faster than he would like to. Trey Benson, the intended target. But Clemens beat them to the punch. Travis and the Knowles trying to tack on some more here. After a slow start, they have been humming. Travis got time. Pocket clean. Goes down the field. He's got a man. Overshoots his target, Jaheim Bell, the South Carolina transfer. Look for them to continue to try to find ways to get Jaheim Bell involved in the game plan. And this guy's everything. He could play tight end, he could play running back, he could play wide receiver, and he creates mismatches for opposing teams' defense each and every week because you have to think are we treating him like a tight end or are we going to treat him like a wide receiver, knowing as much Florida State likes to target him? Florida State, third and 10 coming up from their own 44. They're three for eight on third downs thus far tonight. Travis rolling out of the pocket. He's going to keep it himself and taken down near midfield. A five yard gain. It'll be fourth down coming up and four. They have gone for it on fourth down a number of times here, Orlando. Yeah, Coach Atkins and Coach Norville does a great job of keeping Travis in, in shotgun so he's able to see if the Golden Eagles are going to blitz and elude that blitz and now go pick up some with his legs. But right now, they're going for it. Florida State three for four on fourth downs today. They'll say it's fourth and five. They've converted 75% of these fourth down opportunities thus far tonight. Southern Miss showing blitz. And here they come. Travis quickly over the middle. It's caught. Hakeem Williams with an eight-yard gain. They love this freshman from Fort Lauderdale, Stranahan High School. They expect big things from him in his future, and you're seeing it in the present already. They continue to just sit back there and, and get pre-snap reads and let Jordan Travis do whatever he would like to with this offense. He has a great feel of this game right now, and he's making all the right throws. Gets the first down. Ball on the 42-yard line of Southern Miss. Travis, again, this time to right. And right loses the football, but Florida State quick to recover. Kyle Morlock able to corral that one. Kyle Morlock with a great block on the perimeter to try to help spring right, but also keeping his head on a swivel and playing through the whistle where he's able to get back on that football and to regain the possession for Florida State. And here we got another completion to Morlock, and he's upended by Jay Stanley near the 10 yard line. A 28 yard gain. Kyle Morlock saving him on one end and taking advantage of a beautiful pass from Travis on the other. They say when you play through the whistle, great things happen. And Jordan Travis finding him for explosive down the middle of the field. About 40 seconds left here in the half. Travis takes the snap on first down, goes to the end zone, a fade to Williams, incomplete. A little short on that one. Mm, I know if, if I'm Jordan Travis, I want that one back. I want to be able to lead Williams a little bit more instead of just throwing that back shoulder. Great job getting off the ball, stemming to the outside and drifting, but you want that football just a little further to be able to go up and get it. Tolls and coverage there. Florida State in the red zone, four for four today, four touchdowns. There's Hakeem Williams, the number 28 recruit on our ESPN rankings. Florida State have been doing a great job of mixing it up down here with run and pass. So maybe a quarterback design draw. Well, they've got time. Remember, under two minutes, the clock stops on a first down, and they can still get a first down. Timeout here. That's the new rule in college football. The clock does not stop on first downs unless it's two minutes to go in the second and fourth quarter, or under two minutes, rather. Yeah. So if you're Florida State, you got to be feeling really good. You have enough field right now to get a first down before scoring a touchdown as well. So right now, if you're Coach Norville and Coach Atkins, you're telling your team to settle down. We got plenty of time. We have timeouts as well. We don't have to rush into anything right now. 
we, you know, let's execute our offense and make sure that we come up with seven instead of three. One more timeout for Florida State if they need it. Be sure to stick around after the game for the ACC Huddle Post Game Show. Kelsey Riggs and the crew are here in Tallahassee, and we'll have a full recap of all of today's ACC football games. The ACC Huddle is next immediately following our game. How about EJ Manuel's suit today? Can we get another picture of that? I don't know if he's if he's in the eye shot of the camera, but that green suit he's got I'm jealous man mm, it definitely put a smile on my face yeah. I might have to call my tailor and get it with his tailor because yeah. it even like what, what's that a little yeah I mean look they all look great as well. they all look great but don't get me wrong that that green suit is sweet it's definitely an eye catcher you see that big smile on EJ Manuel and you can understand why as Florida State with a big lead here trying to add some more Travis on second down, throws over the middle, incomplete. A dangerous pass there. Jay Stanley with the pass breakup. He had two last week and two picks against Alcorn State. Yeah, that's Southern Miss ball hawk right there. Jay Stanley, sticky in coverage, but able to read Jordan Travis's eyes the whole entire time to make a play on the ball and add another pass breakup to his resume. Florida State, third down and long coming up, can still get a first down. 31 seconds here in the first half. They're three for nine on third downs. It's all about just settling down. I like how they went five wide on the last play. Here they are, Coleman in motion, Travis backpedaling, dumps it off to Toa Feely, and he is taken down from behind after a short gain there. This Golden Eagle defense right now is doing a great job of reading their keys. Jalil Clemens on the tackle, a five yard loss rather, pardon me. And the clock is running down and we'll get a, a field goal opportunity, I'm, I'm assuming. They're gonna take a timeout here with one second on the clock. Florida State again, four for four in the red zone today. Yeah, credit to this coaching staff of executing just an end of a half situation right there to a T. Obviously, you want to score seven as much as possible, but knowing that you're in the red zone already, you don't have to take as many chances, right? So Florida State does a great job of running out all that time, leaving Southern Miss with no time, and now trotting their field goal team out there to add three to the scoreboard. Ryan Fitzgerald. To try a field goal. He was one for one last week. Hit a 33 yarder against LSU. This one, a 35 yard attempt. From the left hash, Rodney, no, excuse me, Alex Mastromano, the punter, is the holder. There's the snap. The kick is up, and it is good. Right down the middle right there. Ten plays, 39 yards on the drive, capped off by that 35-yard field goal from Fitzgerald. Two minutes and 33 seconds off the clock as Florida State, a commanding lead of 31-3. to Southern Miss will receive in the second half as they deferred to start this. You see Mike Norvell there chatting with his team before they even head to the locker room. You yeah. got to love the passion by Mike Norvell. Yeah, it, Coach Norvell strikes me as a guy that doesn't care about the scoreboard. Don't look at it. You know, let's keep our head down for 60 minutes and see what happens at the end of the game. And that's what this team is doing. Now let's get you to Briggs, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Eddie Royal for the ACC Network Halftime Report. Kelsey? Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football. The Knowles up. 31 to 3 against Southern Miss here at Dope Campbell Stadium in complete control of this contest. Welcome inside Dope Campbell alongside Orlando Franklin. I'm George Sedano. Marilyn Payne will join us in just a second. Florida State's dominating Orlando. How have they done it? They've been doing it by a balanced attack. They've been able to run the football and throw it. Very impressive. Over 100 yards on the ground for Florida State in the first half this day. But they've also cleaned up the miscommunications on the exterior of the on the perimeter of the offense. It's time for our Bojangles big mo moment of tonight's game. Let's take a look at that. So just right off the bat, you see Jordan Travis being special with his legs, continues to buy time with his eyes down the field the whole entire time, but then pulls it down and is able to go get a first down for FSU. 
followed by that one with the Trey Benson run up the middle for a big score. And Keon Coleman just continues to show his athletic ability. Might be the most athletic catch of the year. And last but not least, a huge touchdown for Keon Coleman finding the end zone for the first time tonight, but he found it three times last week. Here's some stars of the game that you see tonight. Jordan Travis, of course, Trey Benson, as you alluded to, and Keon Coleman continues to have an incredible connection with his quarterback, Jordan, Tra Jordan Travis. The Michigan State transfer has been fantastic. And the kickoff here by Fitzgerald to Antavius Willis, and he will call a fair catch. Let's go down to Maryland. Mike Norvell didn't have many complaints about his defense allowing just three points, but concerning the offense, he said we've cost ourselves a lot of opportunities, in particular at the hands of drop passes. He also wants to see the run game become more involved in this third quarter. He likes what Trey Benson has done so far in this game, but that needs to be a regular part of what we see these last two quarters tonight. Florida State, last two second halves. Outscored opponents 62 to 10, 31 to 7 in the second half last week, and 31 to 3 tonight. This offense has been firing on all cylinders. That's a save roughness. Receiving team number 26. The penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal. First down, Southern Miss. So Southern Miss headed the wrong direction to begin the second half. Much like the first half, to be honest with you, they have tallied up a ton of penalties in this contest. It's all been self-inflicted wounds if you're Southern Miss. The false starts, the, the, there's been a bunch of those offensively. You have to be able to calm down and just run your plays and understand it's about you guys. You know, 70 yards in the first half, not a lot of yards totally for a whole entire half out of this offense. 12 penalties for 80 yards for Southern Miss. Wiles takes the snap. Rolling in trouble, throws it incomplete. Ventral Cypress in coverage there. Ty Mims, the intended target. Frank Gore, by the way, only seven carries for 22 yards. Frank Gore Jr. for Southern Miss. Yeah, and if you're Coach Hall, you got to think about getting this man, young man going. Frank Gore talks about this game is going to be a game that he could, you know, feel exactly how he what he thinks about himself. But you got to get him the ball and give him those opportunities because the opportunities that he has had, he's been able to move forward instead of backwards. Second and 10, ball on the 12-yard line. Wiles hands it off to Gore. Not much there. Maybe about a yard. That Florida State defensive line just continues to apply pressure, shoot their gaps, and just stay in there and not allow the Golden Eagles offensive line to move them. These guys are coming. It, it seems like they're even more fresh, George, in the second half when you look at this Florida State front seven. No gain there for Frank Gore Jr. Southern Miss 0 for 5 on third downs. Wiles, by the way, 4 of 14 for 61 yards in this contest on third and long. Wiles takes the snap, throws it over the middle. It is incomplete. Jacarius Caston could not hold on. Bernardo Green, who was one of the stars of the game last week on defense for Florida State in coverage. Yeah, green right there, just tight coverage, not letting Casting get any, Jacarius Casting get any type of separation right there. Good, clean football play on the ball as well. Southern Miss forced to punt here. Bryce Lofton to punt. Keon Coleman near midfield. Lofton with the punt. A low punt. And it's taken an FSU bounce and immediately picked up and stabbed in midair at the 44-yard line. 31-yard Thir punt there. Go ahead, Orlando. Sorry about that. Great job by Coleman right there saying, Peter, 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 get away the, from the football so to not, you know, have a player touch it. But this offensive line for FSU, they have been the guys that have got it done up front tonight. They've been able to run the football. They're able to pass protect and you see that this line has continuity with 214 starts entering this season as a whole entire offensive line. So Jalen Sims had downed it 
for Southern Miss and now Travis and company take over at the 45 yard line of Southern Miss. Travis. Hands it off to Benson who tries to bounce it outside met with some resistance after a three yard gain. I know it wasn't a big game George but you got to love the running style of Trey Benson. It's the patient. It's the little subtle movements. It's not a lot of erratic movements or, or being panicked. He's always trying to move forward, but it's showing that vision over and over and over again. And that's why he has two touchdowns on the night already for it. Benson, of course, here last year, one of the best players in the country as far as yards after contact last season, was an Oregon transfer previously to arriving to Florida State. A toss to Benson. Benson with a hole. Still on his feet, cutting back inside. Headed towards the sideline, breaking for the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown, Trey Benson! A 42-yard run. Florida State putting it on Southern Miss. I love how patient he is on this play. It starts with the guys up front, though. Darius Washington pulls out from that right guard position and is able to get a kick out block. And Trey Benson reads it perfectly and transfers downhill and is explosive, showcases his explosive ability in the open field for now his third touchdown of the night. Two plays, 45 yards, the 42 yard touchdown there by Benson. 53 seconds off the clock for Florida State. Fitzgerald, low snap. They pick it up and he boots it through and the Knowles have a 35 point lead. Trey Benson his third rushing touchdown of the night. Looking at Trey Benson right here he sets up his block is able to put his feet on the ground and just use his speed. But look at these FSU receivers down the field blocking their butts off to get in the end zone. Great job. Great offensive play. Steamy night here in Tallahassee, and the Knowles are hot as well, putting it on Southern Miss. Kickoff by Fitzgerald, and fair caught by Pittman. Here's Trey Benson's day, three TDs for the young man. The physical style of running that he has showed over the last couple of years is not on display tonight. Tonight, it's about the athletic ability, being able to run away from people, get out there in the open space and show his athleticism. Trey Benson using his wide receivers surgically on the, on the field on his last touchdown run by setting up his blocks and having himself a night. And let's not forget, he's a Mississippi native too. So it probably feels a little good to put it on some of the guys maybe he competed against on a different level. He's got nine rushes for 79 yards and three TDs, one catch for 20 yards. Yeah, I'm sure he knows a couple guys on that other sideline being from the state of Mississippi. Frank Gore up the middle, not much there. They'll give him two yards on the play. Frank Gore Jr., just not a lot of room to operate. Yeah, well, you continue to look at this front seven for Florida State, and they just come at you in waves. That's the thing that this coaching staff loves the most about this defense this year is they're too deep at every position. So if a guy gets tired, you can just tap your helmet and get out. This is the best team they've had in a decade here, yes? Yes, I truly believe that. They are as deep as deep can be on both sides of the ball. Mike Norvell has masterfully worked not only the portal, but recruiting as well. I know he gets a lot of credit. Incomplete pass there for Gore, a swing pass. He couldn't hold on to it. He gets a lot of credit for the portal, but man, you look at some of these freshmen. Their secondary is full of great freshmen. They got four corners or, or safeties that are going to be big time players for them. We mentioned Hakeem Williams, who had a catch. Destin Hill's another freshman in the receiving core. They've got guys, and they've done a phenomenal job on both sides in regards to building this roster. Yeah, when you look at this defense, it's a two deep. Akeem Dent went down earlier with a hamstring, and it's just the next guy, Kevin Knowles. You, you get an opportunity. Um, this defense under Adam Fuller blitzes and plays man to man coverage, but everybody can go out there and play every position and on the back end in the secondary. Third and eight, Wiles intercepted. A pick six. Jerry and Jones. Jerry and 
Jones with the touchdown, a 27-yard return. And Billy Wiles' nightmare night continues. You know, we talked about, you know, the transfer portal. Jerry and Jones coming out of Mississippi, transferring into FSU a couple years back and has been a staple for this defense playing that nickel position. And right there, he's just able to get a great jump on the ball, but see the ball the whole entire time as it's leaving Billy Wells' hand. A touchdown there, and Southern Miss 0 for 7 on third down. That one the most costly of them all. Anytime you, that you throw the ball and the other team gets points, right? It's, it's a big no-no. Fitzgerald to tack on the extra point is up and good as he splits the uprights. Jarion Jones was right there, right place, right time, anticipated. He sees it the whole entire time, jumps in front of the receiver, and is able to use all of his speed to get to the end zone. This defense has been on their heels and been playing comfortable the whole entire night as they've been able to get after the quarterback on the other side. Around here, we like to keep things simple and honest. Sure do. That's why at Progressive, we show you rates from other companies, even if they're lower than ours, so you can choose what's best for your family. Comparing rates used to be a hard day's work, but not with AutoQuote Explorer. You need me to help again? No. So join us and taste why Progressive is the name people trust. Sorry, are we talking about apples now or insurance? <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny? There you go! That's what I'm talking about! Is this your plan to watch the game today? Uh, yeah, I have to watch my neighbor's NFL Sunday ticket. It's not your best plan, but you know what it is? My plan from Verizon. Switch now and they'll give you NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on them. This plan is amazing. Another amazing plan? Backing away from here very slowly. Oh, Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. Football season is here. Get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on us, a $449 value. Plus, get a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, only on Verizon. Welcome back to Tallahassee. Florida State up 45-3, to and this turnaround has been fascinating to watch. National champions in 2013. Jimbo Fisher then resigned in 2017. A couple of tough seasons there, four straight losing seasons. And then 2022, last year, Mike Norvell and company. Another 10-win season for this storied program, but the first since 2016. Mike Norvell has got this ship steered in the right direction now. And really an incredible human being when you get to know him. I can see again why kids want to play for him and this staff. Yeah, he had us, he had me fired up, George, in, in our meeting with him a couple days ago. I mean, just his philosophy, and he's a high-energy guy. He's one of the first guys out there at practice each and every day, but he really cares about these players. He spends time getting to know each and every individual off the football field to then coach them on the football field. So you could see that these young men really want to play for this coach and really want to win for him because of everything that they go through and everything that they know that he will go through for them as well. Let's check in with Maryland. Mike Norvell said, as a coach, you have to be willing to be the example for your players. He said, I get great joy from those moments when they score, come up with a big stop, but you have to always be able to show the inspiration, humility, and vulnerability in those moments so they'll play for you that way. No doubt, Maryland. He said, can I be what I say I want them to be? Can I have the humility to do that? He added that in our conversations with him. They dump it off to Gore, who stays on his feet and stays in bounds, still fighting for yards as he gets across the 31 to the 32-yard line, a seven-yard gain there. Another thing that I love about Coach Norville is that he's hard on his coaches. He tells his coaches to go out there and be the example. When things weren't going right for this program a couple years ago, that was his approach to each and every coach, where now they were their example, and it trickled down into the locker room, and now the players became the example as well. And now they're one of the elite programs in the country. Gore up the middle there for four, has a first down. Florida State has been incredible. 35 plus points in eight straight games, the longest active streak in the nation. Here's Wiles under pressure, trying to avoid the pressure. Flings one sidearm incomplete, intended for Hayes. 
That Florida State defense continues to just go downhill. You know, you look at these big boys up front, you look at Joshua Farmer, you look at Fisk. These guys are able to beat one-on-one -on -one blocking every single time. And if you're on the back end, you love what's in front of you on the defensive line because you know those guys are going to be able to create pressure and flush the quarterback and make your job a lot easier. So great job to Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator, and continuing with his philosophy and not changing, just getting the right players for his philosophy. Yep. Built on physicality, the identity is on display at the moment, and you see it. Hand off to Gore, tries to bounce it to the outside, got some room, picks up a first down, but a flag on the play. Patient run there by Gore, but may not be positive yardage here. Sometimes when you have those patient runs and they, they bounce outside, It ends up being a holding because you're expecting the ball to be ran on the inside. So you try to position block on on the exterior of the play. And now all of a sudden you feel that defensive lineman or that defensive player trying to pull away from you. And you're realizing that it's bouncing. Frank Gore not happy with that. He is upset at the moment and he's having words. He's trying his best. But unfortunately the penalties are really hurting Southern Miss 13 penalties for 90 yards. Rodriguez, Clark, and Chandler Pittman now in the backfield to spell Gore. Wiles with time. Throws one across the field for Hayes and sails it over his head. You know, when the when the Golden Eagles get into a second and long situation, they typically take Frank Gore Jr. out of the backfield. So I anticipate he was a little frustrated right there. Because it's only second down, coach. Let, let me get another opportunity. Let me stay out here. Let me play some football. But that's just how. Coach Hall has ran this offense. Wiles, by the way, now 5 of 20 for 68 yards, has the one interception, the pick six. Third and long. A position that Southern Miss has found themselves in a ton today. They're 0 for 7 on third downs. Wiles got time, floats one up for Gore, and over his head and Gore frustrated at that because he put way too much air under that. Yeah, that's the competitor in Frank Gore Jr. He has been everything for this offense the last couple years and uh, on a big stage against big time talent. You know he wants to get his opportunity and get his touches. But right there that one floats over his head and it's a missed opportunity because there was daylight up the field in front of him. And he is not happy. You see the frustration there. Frank Gore Jr. talking to his teammates and his coaches. The execution, not what they expected tonight. A wobbly punt fielded by Coleman at the 40, gets into Southern Miss territory, breaks a tackle, and tackled near the 40 yard line down to the 42. A 31 yard punt, 18 yard return for Coleman. Here's some national news today. Coach Prime. 2-0 as he took care of business, him and his team, against Nebraska today. A blowout victory there. Notre Dame, despite a weather delay, defeated NC State. And Notre Dame now has 29 consecutive wins against the ACC. Their last loss in 2017 against Miami. They lost 41-8 to there. And Texas upsets Alabama, Orlando. Yeah, we have a change at quarterback right now with T Tate Roadmaker at quarterback. So it looks like Jordan Travis's night is over. And understandably so. And he finds his big tight end there. Marston Douglas rumbling down the sidelines for a touchdown. Marston Douglas, 42 yards. The big fella getting to celebrate the red shirt junior out of Brownsville, Tennessee. Haywood High School, stand up. Marquiston Douglas is by far the biggest tight end on this roster at 6'4", 274 pounds, but he is able to get out there in space, and there's a convoy in front of him escorting him to the end zone for a huge explosive play, but results in a touchdown as well. My apologies to the Douglas family. I somehow messed up his name twice on that call. <laughs> I call him Marquiston, Marqueston, and it's Marquiston. My apologies to the family. Yep. 
How about this stat one? If you're Tate Roadmaker, right? Yeah. One, one pass, pass 42 one yards, touchdown. touchdown. His quarterback rating is like a billion right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this FSU staff has done a great job of calming down all of their quarterbacks. Roadmaker gets back there, is able to look off the defense, find Douglas in the flat, and just everybody just working their butt off to get in front of him, to escort him to the end zone right there. This team is explosive. It doesn't matter who you put in. They are deep at every position. We've seen big plays out of Jaheim Bell, Kyle, Kyle Morlock, and now Marquiston Douglas out there. And as you can see, Tate Rowmaker running up and saying, touchdown, guys. I could go out here and have some fun as well. Yeah. Rowmaker had two TDs last year in seven games played. Florida State is an incredible team this year. They are insanely dangerous. They are a playoff caliber team, Orlando. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah, and now you get opportunities right now to develop the younger guys, develop the guys that have not played a lot because you're up huge right now against the Southern Miss football team. So now you get to spread the ball around and, and see what some of the younger guys can do. The kick and a fumble there. Southern Miss recovers. And Tavius Willis. And that's the kind of night that Southern Miss has had, Orlando. Yeah, they've just been hurting themselves. You know, you look at Willis on that play, he gets underneath the football, but he's not able to catch it cleanly. He might have got a little bit more yards if he was able to catch it cleanly. Instead, this drive is going to start right about the 11 yard line. And Billy Wiles trotting out again. A lot of time left in this game still. Total yards today. Florida State 381. Southern Miss 86. Total domination. Yeah, but if you're Southern Miss, you knew that this was going to be a tough challenge going up against this FSU team that is as deep as they are. The first of the half. Southern Miss with a timeout seconds. here. I think Southern Miss is a team that could really go compete in the Sun Belt Conference and go win that conference this year. I think this will be a good growing moment for this young football team, but also for their quarterback, Billy Wiles. Understanding that you have to be able to stay calm on under pressure. You're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage moving forward because it is a copycat league, and teams are watching that he struggled with it this week. So I think this could be a great you know, learning moment for this entire football team if you're Southern Miss. Coach Will Hall told us that he believes his team will have a chance to win the Sun Belt. Thinks they're the best group of five conference. But tonight, there is just a disparity in talent and also a disparity in execution. Yeah, the plays have not been clean on the Southern Miss side. Guys have looked confused. And I'm wondering if you're trying to do a little bit too much offensively when that happens. Wiles launches one down the field. Incomplete. Intended there for Latrell Jones. They call him fraud. And in coverage, Quindarius Jones for Florida State. Yeah, that's been Latrell Jones' first look at the ball tonight. That's been the first target his way. I thought they would have tried to get him involved early and often, but right there you see just not able to connect. But if I'm Coach Hall, I'm trying to get back to that at some point. Yeah, they've had a struggle getting the ball out. They wanted to get the ball out as quickly as possible. And the accuracy tonight for Wiles has not been there. Rodrigue Clark picks up some yardage there, enough for a first down. A nice patient run by Clark to the left side of that line and able to go out there and get one of those rare first downs for this Southern Miss offense. Florida State, though, I think they're the best team in the country, Orlando. I agree with you on that, George. I mean, you look at how deep they are at every position, but also you look at just you know, the physicality that they bring. You know, they don't wait for you to attack them when they're on defense. They go attack you. On special teams, it's the exact same thing. They don't wait for you to come to attack them. They bring the physicality to you. So that's going to be exciting to watch where this season ends for FSU. But, man, they are deep at every position, and the sky's the limit with this football team. 14-yard gain there. Wiles to Kasten. 
for a first down. Wiles play action launches one downfield's got a man incomplete intended for Latrell Jones. Let's go down to Maryland. Coach Will Hall agrees with you guys. He said I believe that Florida State is one of the top two if not the top team in the country and the ways that he believes his team can grow from this. He said we will learn more about what a good football team looks like just from playing against them. We beat Florida State. He said it would be absolutely unbelievable but I know that this game no matter what happens sets us up to win the Sun Belt. Yeah, as long as they can stay healthy, they're going to be in that mix in that conference, the fun belt, as I like to call it. Handoff to Dreet Clark down the sidelines, picks up a first down, a gain of 12 on the play. Yeah, this is one of the few times, you know, since Coach, well, this is the only time since Coach Hall has got to Southern Miss where they have been able to create some depth on the offense and on the defense. But th this offensive line night against the front seven of FSU but as I picture is when you do start that conference playing the Sun Belt that you should be able to now dominate the opposing teams that you play against yeah you're definitely not going to see a line as good as this with as many players as they can rotate yeah this is the best this is the best front seven in the nation right now in my opinion um, you wait just, wait wait Georgia fans I, listen I'm with you but hey. you're I'm just letting you know oh. if there are any Georgia fans listening now your Twitter is going to blow up is all I'm saying. OK. Well, Georgia fans, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I went to the University of Miami, so I, I don't really love to just give the credit to FSU, but, but I got to be honest. Objective, yes. This front seven is unbelievable yeah. right now. The depth, the speed that they have. And these guys are tackling machines. Last week, we saw some missed tackles. This week, we've seen them clean that up and them get after the Golden Eagle offense. Second down and 10 here, Wiles. Hands it off to Clark again, and Clark, a five-yard gain. Some nice off-tackle running right now, continuing to get the left side of that offensive line some work, but Drake Clark staying patient with how he's reading it one gap at a time and having efficient runs out there. They'll mark him just shy of the 50, so they'll give him four. Again, Southern Miss 0 for 8 on third downs. Third and about six and a half, we'll call it. Wiles in the gun. And Coach Hall wants to call a timeout. He wants to talk this thing over. And at this point, I would imagine this is about executing for them, like just getting the opportunities to work this thing out. Yeah, it's, it's not about brownie points or anything like that, but you want to feel good about yourself. So no more, you know, self-inflicted wounds and take care of business and go out there and have success. Welcome back to Tallahassee. 52 to 3 Florida State George Sedan Orlando Franklin with you here. And that inner tube has been bouncing around the stadium. Typically how you see Baseball fans do it with a beach ball. That tube has moved further than Southern Miss's offense tonight, it feels like. <laughs> yeah, it has. Uh, during the break, it was all up and down the stands over there. So they, they're having fun watching their nose get after it tonight. But right on cue, trying to prove me wrong. Southern Miss with a completion there to Henderson for a first down. Their first third down conversion of the night. Now one for nine. Yeah, Tyquan Henderson is just able to, to run a nice route and use his hands to go catch the football and convert that first down. The first third down, like you said, George. Uh, but now it's, that's nice because you, now you showed them something. It's not all just run. Well, it was a good timeout, right? If you were able to convert, you're trying to get these small victories here if you're Southern Miss. Wiles on the run, dumps it off there. He's got a man down the sidelines tripped up. It's Chandler Pittman for a 14 yard gain. He'll pick up another first down. A nice little movement by Pittman behind the line of scrimmage to come across the ball and get open in space. And Billy Wiles now with a nice touch pass to get him the ball out there on the perimeter. And Pittman goes for another first down. And you hear the fans cheering. It's because that inner tube is still making its way around the stadium. <laughs> and it is working its way around. It is now in front of us directly outside of the end zone area. Wiles drops back. Pressure coming. 
Throws it off his back foot, got a man. It is picked off, but out of bounds. So it will be an incompletion. Wow, well, does a great job of looking the DB off, but you just got to get that ball a little bit up further for the wide receiver in that position to try to complete that pass. Blake Nicholson was in coverage there, could not keep a foot in bounds. Yeah, and if you're Florida State, you got to feel really good about your performance tonight because now you're able to kind of get a good look on all these different guys. Blake Nicholson is not even on the two deep, but yeah. he's out there getting some playing time for this Knowles defense. This is an opportunity for these guys to get reps, to your point. And that's how good they are. Dump off pass there. Completion to Justin Reed, the freshman tight end. Out yeah. of Georgia. Justin does a great job of just flashing his hands over the middle of that field and Billy Wiles does an even better job with throwing that ball with touch to get the young man a opportunity of it at an explosive play and he turns it into an explosive play with his legs. His first catch of the season. 13 yard gain. Wiles trying to put it in the end zone. Wiles fade pattern. Sails it out of bounds. Intended for Zay Franks. Just a little too far right there for Billy Wiles. That's what's been the story of the night on those deep passes that he's trying to connect on. It just maybe it came off his hand the wrong way, but they've all been like either six inches short or six inches too long. They've gone with the backup running backs in Clark and Pittman as Frank Gore. Seems to be done for the night. Second and ten. They hand off to Dreek Clark, who gets in the end zone for a touchdown. A 12 yard scamper. And Southern Miss with something positive on the night. Yeah, a great call by Coach Wilhelm on this. I mean, Dreek Clark's been having success of running off tackle to the left a bunch tonight and now flip the play and now allow him to go to that right side and test it out and he's able to find the end zone for the first time for the Golden Eagles offense 13 plays 89 yards on that drive capped off by the 12 yard run there by Dreek Clark five minutes and 41 seconds off the clock the extra point by Stein is up and good 42 point lead for Florida State will be back in 30 seconds. Welcome back to Tallahassee, Florida State with a 42 point lead. We were talking earlier, Orlando, about who's better right now, Florida State or Georgia. Now you are going to select who's got the edge here. Yeah, so just right off the bat, quarterback position, I have to go with FSU because Jordan Travis, this offense is built around him. You know, talking to Coach Norvell and talking to Coach Atkins, they do things in this offense that they can't do if they didn't have a Jordan Travis at the quarterback position. He said, Alex Atkins, the offensive coordinator, it's his offense. He's the one that makes it work. What do you got the skill position? When you look at the skill position, it's hard to beat how Florida State, the talent that they have. They have two number ones at the wide receiver position. Florida State receives, takes it out, Deuce Span takes it out of his own end zone, and he is upended just beyond the 15 yard line. Let's keep going, Orlando. So you got FSU at the quarterback, skill position players, you've got FSU O line. Yeah, yeah, I gotta take I gotta take the, the skill position at the FSU. They have two number one wide receivers in Keon Coleman and Jolly Wilson. And you look at Jaheim Bell, he's a tight end in this offense, but both of those guys are bigger than him. Yeah. When, when I look at the offensive line, okay, Georgia fans, I'm going to give you guys some love here. I got to go UGA because they play bully ball up front. That offensive line gets after the opposing defensive line and the front seven. Defensively, Florida State, I got to go with them again. This defense is so deep. Right now, you've seen the twos and threes out there. Tate Rodemaker, the twos. Rodney Hill, one of the backup running backs, got a hole, makes a man miss. Nifty move there on the Hezzy and then gets wrapped up just beyond the 35 yard line, an 18 yard run there. Rodney Hill does a great job countering, but allowing the play to develop in front of him and making a man miss in the open field. This young man is going to be extremely exciting for FSU fans to come. All right, Rodemaker. 
Got four wide out there. Hands it off again to Hill. Short gain there. So let's go back after the one yard gain to what you got. So you got FSU defense? FSU defense. They're too deep in every position. And coach, and I got to give him some more love to the UGA fans because guess what? Kirby Smart, he has the hardware. Yeah, he's right? got back to back championships. So yeah, there you go. But you, the tail of the tape, you got Florida State with an edge, a slight edge, three to two. Yep, this team is deep, man. This team's going to be exciting. Right now, they're ranked number four in the country. I'm sure they want to finish the season ranked either number four or higher to make their appearance in the college football playoffs. Keziah Holmes with the pickup there, a gain of seven on the play. Let's check in with Maryland. See, I need to see Orlando's picks here one more time because it looks like something changed since just after our coaches' meetings when the former Miami Hurricane easily said he was going to take the FSU coaching staff as his favorite. I think it's because of just how much they sold their program in particular. <laughs> Alex Atkins, but be honest, Orlando, be honest. You changed your mind. You're allowed to change your mind. I did change my mind because Alex Atkins had me <laughs> wanting to play football, Marilyn, after we met with him huh? a couple nights ago. <laughs> I was ready to go out there and try to run through a wall for this coach. Right. I was so excited in our coaches' meetings with him. And, and Florida State staff is excellent, as you mentioned there. And here's Campbell with a nice run to midfield, picks up the first down mm -hmm. after a seven-yard mm -hmm. game. And, and I get it, but right. I mean, when you're the team that's one, you got to go with them. Jalen Sims with the tackle on Campbell. Yeah, when you're a team that has won back-to-back -back national championships that have, have continued to get it going, that's what everybody wants, right? They want the hardware, and Kirby Smart has got the hardware along with some SEC championships as well. Rodney Hill back in the backfield again. Speaking of which, we mentioned earlier Alabama with the loss to Texas. Hill sneaks through the line, but tackled immediately after that. A short game there of two. And Texas for years, we've been hearing. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. And they've been building this roster. You heard Steve Sarkeesian say this all over ESPN over the last several months. We've built this team knowing we're going to the SEC. He knows what it's like to coach in the SEC as he coached for Nick Saban. Nick Saban assistants don't normally have a great record against him. Kirby Smart has a good record against him recently. Uh, but Steve Sarkeesian gets the win. Texas, are you buying the hype? I'm not ready to buy the hype yet. And that's because Steve Sarkeesian is playing against his former head coach. There's always a little bit extra that you're going to get a little extra motivation for your football team. But Texas did go out there and get it done. What scares me about Texas is the depth. I don't think they have the depth in order to go all the way. So we'll see how the season plays out. Destin Hill with an 18 yard catch there. Catch and run. Florida State. Marching again into Southern Miss territory. Nice balance of run and pass keeping the, the defense on their heels right now on this drive. Another handoff. Keziah Holmes with a spin move there. He hit him with the B button there, Orlando. Yeah, great patience by this young man. They're just running a counter play, pulling the guard, but also having the tight end come out there and kick out as well. Puts his foot in the, in the ground and is able to get north and south and go pick up the first down. 13-yard gain there. I may be a little old school when I said B button. I'm guessing right now, if you're doing PlayStation or Xbox, maybe one of the left or right triggers. I don't know. You know I mean, I haven't, I haven't played in a while. I haven't played a video game since I've left college. So really? I'm right there with you, George. I stopped playing maybe like a year and a half ago. We got a timeout here. Nope, actually, we got the end of the court. So, Florida State marching again up 42 here at Doak. To Doak Campbell Stadium, the fourth ranked Knowles rolling. Mike, what allowed you to make the decision to end the day for your first string offense in particular? Well, I mean, uh, I think we came out, we do what we wanted to do, had a couple big plays. Obviously, the pick six was big by uh, by Jerrion, and then, you know, obviously, guys have executed well here in the second half. You know, we still got another quarter to go, got some young guys in, they're going to get their, their first experience and just go trust their training and go play. Thanks for the time. Thanks so much, Gunnels. Mike Norvell and company. Thank you, Maryland. Great job there. As they are still marching down the field, Hill trying to tack on some more. Picks up four yards there. What can we say about 
Mike Norvell, I mean, he told us a story about how this team, kind of the moment where he felt like they were headed in the right direction, and it was his second season. Remember, they lost to Jacksonville State. Yep. Uh, they lost to Wake, I believe, after that, and then they were in Louisville, 0-3. Mm -hmm. And they're getting beat 31-7 at half. Now, they still lost the game 31-23, but he felt like, hey, they didn't quit, right? They fought. And he said that was kind of the moment where he felt like, even though we lost, we had kind of turned a corner. And then they kind of righted the ship a bit there after that. Yeah, just seeing his team and how they responded in the second half was super impressive for Coach Norvo. And you see there a touchdown again for Florida State. Arian Gregory. No, actually, that's not Arian Gregory. <laughs> 13 yard touchdown. Check that. It's Jacob Vandrevis. No, that's not who that is. Vandrevis Jacobs. Vandrevis Jacobs. He's not on our death chart, so my apologies to the Jacobs family. And uh, again, we are trying our best here as we are way down the depth chart. And, and right there is unbelievable moment for this young man seeing his first big time action you know night game dope campbell stadium lots of fans in the building he's able to find the end zone that's got to feel great for him nine plays 83 yard drive capped off with a 13 yard catch to jacobs five minutes 27 seconds off the clock and florida state continues to pour it on A touchdown by Vandravius Jacobs gives the Seminoles a 49-point lead. Florida State right now, the fourth longest active win streak. You can feel pretty confident that you can add another one to that particular tally. Yeah, and th this team is just going to continue to get better and better as the season goes on, George. Right now, these young guys are getting reps, and they're just getting more and more experience for this football team to make you feel more confident in the depth. By the way, thank you to Nando at Nando9410, who sent me the pronunciation phonetically of Andravius. And there's Antavius Willis staying on his feet, getting past the 35-yard line. Hey man, I just I love that the audience is willing to help us here. 30-yard return by Antavius Willis. We appreciate that. Send us the tweets. Mm. I was told I was crazy because I uh I would take uh, U uh, FSU's defense over UGA's defense. Why, why crazy? Uh, I have no idea why I'm crazy, but right now, just watching FSU's defense the last couple weeks, I've been thoroughly impressed with the depth that they've had at all three levels on this defense. Man, yeah, they have been good. There's no doubt about that. Rodrigue Clark in the backfield with Wiles. Clark again. Bouncing it to the outside. Can he turn the corner? He does. He slips past the defender and gets tackled just past the 40-yard line, 11-yard gain there. Just another off tackle. And there, this coaching staff is really excited by Rodriguez Clark and his patience that he brings to the running game. He's able to read it out the right way, one gap at a time, like an NFL running back would do. But now he's able to also get another first down and, and continue to move the chains for this Golden Eagle offense. Dante Anderson on the tackle there for the Knowles. Another carry for Clark. Not much there, a gain of one. Tackle there made by DeMarco Ward. Yeah, FSU's defense right now, the defensive line does a great job of just pinching down and being able to now not allow you to do anything. If you're if you're Southern Miss, you got to continue to attack, attack the edges. They haven't gave you much up the middle all day. So I don't think they're going to do it now with the reserves in the game. I would continue to attack the edges to move the chains. Yeah, for Southern Miss, this is about just trying to execute in a way that they couldn't earlier. And get some good reps out there in live action. Wiles launches one down the field, overshoots his target. Avery White, the tight end. Right there, you see Pittman. He tries to step up and block him, but Florida State, um, it, it just comes in waves, and he ends up on a defensive end, and he tries to hold on for dear life, but Wiles, it gets hit on, an, on the trail end of that play as he's letting the ball go down the field. 
Third and nine coming up as the folks here are headed for the tailgate, or maybe home. I mean, it is late here, that's for sure. What's the time is it? It's almost midnight. One for nine on third down for Southern Miss. Third and long here. Bunches formation at the top of your screen. Wiles. Launches it. Incomplete. Intended for White again. If your coach will haul, I think that the biggest thing that you're going to want to work on moving forward is the scramble drill offensively. Yeah. Keep playing. Keep active. You know, um, you got to be able to transfer your weight and go down the field when you see Wiles scrambling in the pocket. At some point, you a team will be able to put pressure on you like Florida State has tonight, and you've got to be able to get down the field and, and remain an option for Wiles. They're now one for ten on third down. Jacobs to field it, and it takes an FSU bounce. And we will step aside. The Knowles up big here at Tallahassee. There's a little Knoll right there. You see it right there. Missed two days of school. You got to love that if you're a youngster. That's commitment right there, right? Florida State up big. We're getting deeper and deeper down the depth chart here as C.J. Campbell is in the backfield. Quarterback change here. And you see the quarterback on the run. Headed down the sidelines and pushed out of bounds. Jeremiah Robinson pushes him out of bounds, and it's Brock Glenn who's in there after a 34-yard gain. Brock Glenn does a great job of transferring his weight and getting up field, but Hakeem Williams with the block of the night just pancakes the DB on the exterior to have a even 20 more yards on that explosive run. Glenn keeps it on this one, and he gets swallowed up in the backfield. Arian Gregory on the tackle. Let's take a look at Rodemaker's day. He's done as we're going down the depth chart to the fourth string quarterback. I thought A.J. Duffy was the third string quarterback, but they've gone to Glenn. But Rodemaker, I mean, look at that. Could you ask for a better day? <laughs> three for three, 73 yards and two TDs. Yeah, he threw a touchdown on his first pass of the night and his third pass of the night. And now it's been a very short night where now he gets to put that helmet, yep. that hat on, and help out his teammates. Vandravius Jacobs got that second touchdown. And here's a run here. Holmes! Foot race, touchdown, 40-yard scamper! Florida State, doesn't matter who's out there. First yeah. string, second string, third string, you name it, they got it, and they're putting it on Southern Miss. This is a beautiful run by Keziah Holmes. He's in the backfield, comes across the field, but he's able to transfer his weight and now get upfield when get, once he gets outside the tackle box. And from there, George, all you see is the speed. That's what you got to love about this running back room. Every single one of these guys have a lot of speed behind it. Fitzgerald for the extra point. Up and good. 66 points for Florida State. Three plays, 72 yard drive, capped off by a 40 yard run by Keziah Holmes. Just One minute, 17 seconds off the clock. Just off tackle and just shows his speed to get to the end zone right there. Welcome back to Tallahassee. Florida State has 66 points. First time they've scored 60 plus since 2017. They put up 77 against Delaware State. And they have done it in every which way, shape, or form, Orlando. Yeah, we've saw big plays offensively. We've seen the defense contribute to scoring touchdowns tonight. And there's they have found success with all three of their quarterbacks, which if you're Coach Novell, you're feeling really good about this offense right now. Fitzgerald boots it into the end zone. Here's some week two storylines in the ACC. 
UNC with a double overtime thriller right before us tonight. Clemson with the bounce back against Charleston Southern and your Miami Hurricanes Orlando your alma mater defeated Texas A&M. What do you make of what we saw before us today? Well, just a big time win. You know, the first time Miami has won and beat a top 25 team since October 2021. Um, Mario Cristobal, I truly believe, have a this program going in the right direction. And Tyler Van Dyke is getting more and more comfortable as the season goes on. Man, UNC and App State should play every year. They play these crazy games. It's wild, man. Yeah, absolute thriller, right? I mean, it came down to the wire. You're able to see them go back and forth, duke it out. You got to love college football overtime rules. Everybody gets an opportunity, but you get another chance. That's what I love about it, man. Just, okay, you score, now you get an opportunity to answer. And for it to go double overtime, both teams were playing their butts off today. While still in there for Southern Miss, two yard gain for Clark on the run. Clemson with the bounce back, and they needed that in a big way because Duke upset them week one, a two yard loss on that one. Duke upset them. You're big on Duke. I've always been big on Duke. Uh, last year, I thought Duke had a heck of a year. They returned a lot of guys on their offense and defense. And I believe Riley Leonard is one of the best quarterbacks in college football. He can make all the throws. And on the other night, when the whole world was watching, he was able to display his athletic ability as well. So let me ask you this. The top two quarterbacks in the draft, in theory, according to our guy, Mel Kiper, are Caleb Williams, who's up big right now. They were up 35-0 against Stanford, who will be an ACC member next season. Caleb trying to go back to back Heisman's he had two touchdowns pitch and catch there to Octavius Willis 21 yard gain and then you have Drake May North Carolina yep. is the guy most people think will be you know potentially the top pick where do you have Riley Leonard and Jordan Travis in that mix I have both of these guys being able to play their way into the first into the first round of the NFL draft you know both of these guys have came out so far this season and have shocked the world and, and showed that they belong on the stage that they're on you look at a guy like Jordan Travis this is his offense you look at Riley Leonard well Monday or Sunday night whole world's watching takes down big bad Clemson so both of these quarterbacks in my opinion George could play their way into the first round and once you get into the first round then it's all about your interviews and, and you know meeting with these coaching staff one on one and showing them that from the neck up you could handle the capacity of an NFL playbook. Dre Clark with a 14 yard run there for another first down. Yeah I think both guys could I'm with you could be in that first round mix and Jordan Travis to me we talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast he is the CEO of this team every guy respects him and Alex Atkins told us a story as Kirkland is down there and being checked out by Mike Norvell and the training staff. Let's step aside here as they take a look at Kirkland. We'll be back here in Tallahassee in just a moment. People affected by Hurricane Adalia donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover. Your donation enables the Red Cross to pre prepare for and respond to and help people recover from this disaster. We'll provide people and communities affected with food, water, emergency shelter, and relief supplies. Please go to redcross.org slash ESPN or you can scan the QR code on your screen. KJ Kirkland walking off on his own power but with a limp there. At least good to see him walking off on his own power. When Kirkland had got hurt, you saw Coach Norvell go out there on the field and check up on that young man. You know, that shows the character of this coaching staff and how much they care about these young men. Fourteen yard gain, I would agree with that. And it's what we talked about. He is he's just himself, man. Like you can tell there's real empathy there and that comment he made to us where he talked about just kind of like hey man I got to 
walk the walk if I talk the talk for these guys to buy in. Yeah, you said something that stuck out to me that I'll take with me for the rest of my life, and it says, be the example. Yep. Telling his coach and staff to be the example during tough times. You know, you look at a guy like Jordan Travis and being benched twice in his career here at FSU, and for the night that he had tonight, you could tell that these guys truly believe in this coaching staff with how they've walked from day one and, and went about business. And that is what Alex Atkins told us uh, about, you know, you, you, I think you asked him about how he gained the trust of the team. And he said, the staff benched him twice, man. Yep. <laughs> He's had so many ups and downs, and teammates have seen him go through this out the open, is what he said. Yeah, if you're a, a member of the, this Florida State Football Club and you see the starting quarterback, the face of the organization, get benched, you know, you know that you got to go out there and take care of your business. You cannot go out there and miss class or not take care of your schoolwork or not give everything that you have in practice each and every week. So credit to this coaching staff for making tough decisions, even though Jordan Travis was the, the best option for them. They still gave him that tough love for him to turn into that CEO type of quarterback that we see today. He is certainly that. Third down and six coming up. Two for 11 on third downs for Southern Miss. But the ACC is in good hands at the moment with Florida State at the top of that leaderboard. But Miami, as you mentioned, a big win against an SEC opponent. And we've now seen North Carolina beat South Carolina. Florida State beat LSU, obviously. Wiles goes down the field, and it is incomplete, almost picked off there by number 13 for Florida State, Edwin Joseph. Joseph does a great job of getting his head turned around at the last minute. Running down there with the field, but trusting his speed and trusting his playmaking ability to get his eyes turned around to make a play on the football. Now, I know that young man's going to want that one back, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, big time opportunity. Hit him right in the bread basket. Really good job of yep. making a play on the football right there. Stein with a field goal attempt here of 40 yards. Here's the attempt. It is up and good. Southern Miss puts up three more. And what you and I were talking about earlier in regards to the SEC versus the ACC, those matchups matter, especially when you're talking about the college football playoff. Because Florida State, as I mentioned, is at the top of the leaderboard at the moment. And we'll see if Clemson can bounce back. But the fact that the ACC has beaten them head to head multiple times here in the first couple weeks, that's a great sign for the conference. Absolutely. I mean, you just talked about, you know, the college football playoffs. I'll give you an ad player, recruited. The last decade, when you look at college football, a lot of kids, uh, SEC school comes knocking and they're ready to go. But for what the ACC has done the last couple of weeks with some big time wins against some of these big time programs in the SEC, that's also going to help recruiting down the road and yep. make it a lot easier for these coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Because the ACC versus the SEC was not a pretty picture for a while. And this season, that has changed at least early on. That last drive by Southern Miss, nine plays, 52 yards. They get a 45, 40 yard field goal, rather, from Stunt. Yeah. Let's take a look at tonight's playmaker of the game presented by Honey Baked Ham. You see him right there, Trey Benson. Three touchdowns on the day for Trey Benson. He showed patience with his running style, but also physicality on his second touchdown of the night. If you're Coach Norvell and Coach Atkins, you're feeling really good of what you've been able to display in the first two weeks of college football. Keon Coleman gets three touchdowns week one in the air, and you follow that up now by three touchdowns by Trey Benson on the ground tonight. So you've throwing teams that you are a dual threat football team that you have to stay honest when you play against the Seminoles this year. Benson on the Dope Walker, Maxwell, and Paul Horning watch lists, a preseason all ACC player. Happy for that young man as well, finding a nice home here, right, after transferring out of Oregon last year. But one of the more physical running backs in, the, in, the, in all of college football. It doesn't, it takes a convoy to get him down. Well, it's funny, you and I were watching practice the other day, and A.J. Duffy checks in at quarterback now for Florida State, their fourth quarterback of the game today. 
and you immediately looked at him in his lower body and you were like oh yeah he's built right yeah you could tell that you know Trey Benson doesn't miss leg day at all <laughs> probably em embraces it right and yeah. probably tells coach can we get an extra leg day in you know because he definitely gets yeah. after it and, and from the just the hips down he's built like an NFL running back Campbell on the rush there four yards from Kaplan Louisiana Trey Benson as you mentioned 6 1 2 21 that's a strong young man here's Campbell on the move as he picks up enough for a first down a seven yard game it's, it's been all running for the FSU tonight every running back has got an opportunity to touch the football out of the backfield every running back has got multiple opportunities to go out there and showcase what they could do Campbell Jr. now in there being able to, to get some explosive plays for this offense and continue to have the clock ticket. Let me ask you a question. We had mentioned Colorado earlier and USC and the Pac-12 heading into this weekend had six teams in the top 25 tied for the most ever. That's got to be bittersweet considering the way things have unfolded for that conference. Yeah, um, I, I'm sure that that conference is saying, why couldn't this have been, you know, half a decade ago? But absolutely, it's bittersweet. You look at all the, the firepower right now in that conference and how these teams are getting good and build, being able to build their rosters. And I think it's going to create more recognition for these organizations as these colleges continue to join different leagues around the, around the country. Duffy with the run there gets nine. The young man from the Inland Empire in California. Demi Dimitri Stevens is checking in at running back now for Florida State. Duffy pulls there and gets wrapped up for the loss there. How about this George two weeks in a row that the teams that we're covering gets to their fourth quarterback. Yeah. You don't see that very often. And by the way, so here's the deal. If you want your team to score 60 plus points, just invite Orlando, Maryland, and myself, because we had Syracuse last week, 65 points. And now Florida State was 66, and potentially still could get more. So you and I and Maryland will be in Miami on Thursday night for Miami and Bethune Cookman. And they put up, I believe, 70 last year against Bethune Maryland and I were at that game. and so if you want your team to blow the other team out just invite us to the party <laughs> yes sir let's get it let's get it started right AJ Duffy right there just I, I don't believe that this young man's eyes were right on that zone read as far as where he should have been looking it should have been a give in my opinion rather than a pull and, and trying to take it with his, his self to try to pick up that first down Ty Mims waiting at his 10 yard line for the punt there. Mastromano to punt for Florida State. Mims lets it bounce and the Knowles will down this thing inside the 15 yard line. Be sure to stick around after the game for the ACC huddle post game show. Kelsey Riggs and the crew are here in Tallahassee and we'll have a full recap of all of today's ACC football games. The ACC huddle is next immediately following our game. There's Mac Lane. What up Mac Lane. Yes sir. Make sure you uh, check out Mac Lane and the entire crew. They're all over Sirius XM. Mac Lane's got a podcast. Graham Lincoln Mac Lane. Yeah, they do a phenomenal job, yeah. right? If you want the ACC action, they got you covered not only when they're on TV, but in their other ventures as well. Holman Edwards now checks in for Southern Miss. Look at EJ. Can we get EJ one more time after this play? Can we get EJ? We got we got to bring that that suit back one more time. Run up the middle. Picks up seven there. Where's he? There he is. The sun. What I was going to say, George, is that, Tallahassee there. is that the huddle has you covered with all things football, but they also have you covered with all things wardrobe fashion. as well. They got the fashion right there. Look at EJ. Of course, he is the mayor here, and I don't blame him. He was a hell of a player here. 
Yeah. And he's got to be smiling ear to ear right now with this squad. Yeah, he's had some great moments here, but if, if you had to ask him, I bet he would say the future is very, very bright for this FSU football team. And he can't wait to get back down here a couple more times for the year because this football team is inserting their dominance right now in college football and showing that you could recruit really well, you could hit the transfer portal, but also you could develop guys really well. And now they're, they're reaping the benefits because of it. Under a minute to go here. Allman Edwards, as I mentioned, that quarterback as time is ticking here. Mercifully for Southern Miss and Florida State. What an incredibly dominant performance for the number four team in the nation. Yeah, I believe it was really about Florida State today. They came out here. It wasn't about making a statement or anything like that. They came in and did what they did. Uh, offensively, a lot cleaner of a night blocking on the perimeter. With, uh, you know, they got to get better with their drops. And defensively, the communication was better tonight than it was a week ago against LSU and less missed tackles. So if you're Coach Norvell and this whole entire FSU staff, you've got to feel good about the performance that your team was able to go out there and have tonight. And there's the two coaches who have a long-standing relationship congratulating each other on a well-played game and a clean game. Florida State dominated. Good sportsmanship on both sides. And the Knoll fans are excited. The ones that are left, I don't blame them if they left a little early. But these are the diehards right here. These are the ones that the team plays for. Yeah, when you play college football, you know these nighttime games will go a little late. So when I was a player out there on the field, George, I would always take a second on a game, a lopsided game like this, and, and just appreciate the fans that, that stuck around, but also appreciate the atmosphere that it was at the start of years ago. FSU's eight-game winning streak. The longest active winning streak in the ACC. And I anticipate that's just going to keep on getting to a bigger and bigger number. Let's see how big that number gets because this team is way talented. Yep, they've got Boston College. They'll be on the road next week. And then they got that big matchup against Eric McLean's Clemson squad on September. 23rd. Let's go to Maryland with the player of the game tonight, Trey Benson with three TDs. Yeah, the player of the game, not only for us, but Devin up everybody from Southern Miss right now. Trey, congratulations. Our player of the game tonight, three TDs for you. First time in the end zone this season. What did it mean to get the run game going the way that y'all did? Uh, it meant a lot. You know, uh, going to get some of my, you know, former guys from Mississippi, it, you know, just going against them, it meant a lot to me. How important is that piece of this offense to the season ahead? What do you mean? Getting the ground game going oh, yeah. to complement yeah. what y'all do through the I air. Mean, first game, you know, it started a little rough, but you know, we started to pick it up this game. Um, the receivers, they, they were having a little rough time to start it off, so we feel like we had to put the team on our backs. For people around the country watching the Seminoles team, how do you explain the threat that you have both on the ground and through the air? You know, it just, it's all about us. You know, that, that's what makes this team so special. It's not about, it's never about the opponent, it's all about us. So we just continue to, you know, work, you know, being 100%, you know, giving 100% 100 effort, and it's all going to work out. Congratulations and thanks for the time. Thank you. All right, thank you, Marilyn. A fun one, partner. We'll be in Miami on Thursday night on ACC Network. Florida State, eighth straight win, fourth longest active streak in FBS. Want to thank our entire crew here, the crew back in the control room, of course. Scott Epstein, Corey Huffman, and their entire crew. Our statistician, Robert Arguello. Our spotter, Brian Corey, for Orlando, Franklin, and Maryland Payne. I'm George Sedano. Our final score, Florida State 66, Southern Miss 13. Up next, the ACC Huddle postgame show.